kind of out of it. <laughs> um, I'm pretty well fucking exercised today. Oh, and I was up early. Um, but hey, everyone. Um, you're looking swanky. Um, this is legitimately my favorite beach shirt. This, this, it is, it's difficult to tell, uh, on camera, but the fabric is so amazing. Um, yeah, I, I, I have hesitated to wear like Hawaiian shirts because of those stupid boogaloo fuckers, um, for quite some time. I want my Hawaiian shirts back. I am not going to, I'm not going to be, uh, you know, brow beaten into not wearing my Hawaiian shirts because of some bunch of fuckers who want to incite a second civil war and a, a race war, right? Like, <laughs> literally half my closet is Hawaiian shirts. I don't have that many, but I do have a couple favorites. And this one is one of my surviving favorites. Um, exactly, Mitre. Not going to let them win. So today begins the day, you know, day that I push back on that one. I'm an anarchist who is wearing a Hawaiian shirt. Uh, for twos, thank you for uh, <laughs> deploy tactical luau. Uh, thank you for the resub, my man. Um, <laughs> good devil boy, you guys own clothes, capitalist sheepdogs. Um, devil boy, apropos of that... <laughs> This may be an overshare. It's probably an overshare, but that's kind of my life at this point, right? Um, after I got home from my run, right? I had to go out early because of my uh, my TRT clinic wanted to do a blood draw. So I get up fucking early, early, early for me. I get up early to do that and I fucking schlep up there. Um, you know, I can't eat, so I don't I, I don't want to fuck up my, like, IGF numbers and stuff like that because I ingest a whole bunch of, like, easy-to-digest carbs at the early beginning of the day and stuff like that, right? So I'm unfed. Uh, my testosterone levels are crashing because I'm metabol I've basically metabolized all of it that I had in me in an injection. Um, so I get home. I do my injection. I get some fucking food in me. I wait a like 20 30 minutes for some of that to process um and then i go out for a run and it's been my it was my longest run that i've done in quite some time um four laps of the entire fucking neighborhood and i mean the neighborhood extends a ways because we have a park attached um there um and so you know f like four laps of the whole fucking neighborhood and the longest run i've done in years and years and years get home do some, uh, uh, I, I'm like, okay, so get some more carbs in me. It's like post-workout sort of thing. Um, I get home and I'm like, all right, let's do some weights. I did some cardio. Let's do some weights. And I'm fucking sweating. I've already got my shirt off because I took the shirt off partway through the run. I'm like, it's Nevada in summer at this point. I can't, I can't deal with the shirt. So um, I, I get home and all I've got is, you know, I, I go commando. Um, I've got a pair of shorts on basically. And I start giggling. I'm like, you know what? Let's do this. So I did my weights workout. Let's call it Greco-Roman style. <laughs> it's like, you know what? I don't care. I've got space. I'm by myself right now. Like, I'm just going to, you know. So, yeah, I did the rest of my, uh, like, weights workouts in the nude. Um, yeah. And so then I sort of crashed after that. Uh, you know, that was not that long ago, quite frankly. I've just been sort of in a glycogen rebound since then. Um, how many selfies with the boyfriend? Not a one, Karina. I didn't, I, 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 I was working out. I was working out. It's, you know, yeah, I, I, no, um, most days, the idea of eating nauseates me for at least six hours after waiting up. Rev, I feel you. I'm not a breakfast guy. Um, I do, like, not immediately after waking up, but I do do uh, a sort of, like, protein shake um, to reduce. Um, it's kind of just middle ground, average, actually, for uh, uh, for two. It's It's not, like, yeah, it doesn't... It's not that I'm a, you know, grower or a show. It's kind of split down the middle. Like, it's, it's, it's not impressive. 
have, you know, pre-attention, um, but it is not unimpressive. Um, yeah, it's sort of a middle ground for me. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, fair enough. I'm free balling. Yeah. Uh, exactly, Rev. Ah, fair enough for this. <laughs> fair enough, Rev. So I've got a plate of kiwi here. Um, you sort of refuel the machine a little bit more. Um, I'm going to need to do a, like a protein heavy sort of thing here later. Um, you're rich in vitamin C. Good choice. Thank you for two. Um, yeah. Um, so today begins phase two of, um, project Kai. Uh, that's what I'm calling it, by the way. We're just going to call this Project Kai. Um, today begins phase two, or at least later tonight begins phase two. Before I go to sleep, I'll take my first dose of MK677 and my Project Get Swole. Um, I'm not going for swole. I am going to put some mass on. I am going to make gains. I'm not going for swole, though. I'm going for well-rounded. I want cardio. I want a little bit of more, uh, more muscle. I just want overall capabilities dialed up a little bit. Um, so tonight begins, uh, the, uh, the MK677 regiment, which is going to, uh, regiment, which is going to create, uh, increase, um, endogenous productions of human growth hormones. And I, today in my, um, mix, uh, in my drink, I did the preload for, um, creatine as well. So creatine is now in the mix with some branch chain amino acids and other stuff. Right. Um, but that's the interesting stuff. Um, so yeah, we're, we're sort of, we're, we're pushing all the levers as it were. Um, I'm so nervous I have to do what I can for a workout. Work asked me to take time off to heal, so I have no excuse. Ugh. Um, hey, you know what? Fucking, uh, like, we're just going to start doing this earlier and earlier. Anybody who wants to jump on the air with me, we're just going to slowly but surely turn this into a little bit of a community show and kind of pull away a little bit from the, like, debate bro energy. Um... <laughs> oh, sunshine, sweetheart, baby, pookie, tink tink. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, and Karina, I feel you on that. For years and years and years, um, I, oh, well, I just talked to you straight up then. Um, yeah, I feel you on that, Karina. For years and years and years, I, you know, had to watch the injuries. And I still have to watch the injuries. But <sighs> you just got to rehab it. it. It's it's absolutely, like, daunting. And, like, I'm afraid because I woke up crying. Like, I was... I've never really woken up with tears in my eyes before I had opened them. So this was, like... Obviously, I had been having a spasm while asleep, and I just had no means of doing anything. I was freaking out, and my boss called me before I even called in. He's he's asking, he's like, I felt like I, like a sixth sense. I need to ask, how's your back doing? And he heard me crying. He's like, No, nah, okay, good. I'm boss. asking you to take at least a week off. That's a good boss. Uh, yeah, sunshine. They're actually great. Sunshine. I, I think it's most my point actually was for sunshine though. I think most so. people in the community are gainfully employed. Um, some of us speed ran it even. Um, so sunshine, um, do you have to go to work tomorrow? See, this is, this is what I love to do to these unabashed capitalists on, on a day such as today where I'm feeling good. I was physically productive I don't mind doing a little dick measuring. So, Sunshine, 
do you go to work tomorrow? Do you have a job? You have gainful employment. You have a W-2. You've got an employer, that sort of thing that you'll be attending to tomorrow. And obviously, because you're so high and mighty about this, this is a job you need to put in effort every day, right? Like, we're assuming you're in like, well, production or Duffy, development you, or construction. Yeah, Duffy, you did well enough that you don't have to go to work for a few months. You're taking time off. Uh, yes, you're a functioning adult. Cool. Um, I don't have to go to work tomorrow. See, here's the fun fact, Sunshine. Some of us had skill sets that paid us things like $160 to $250 an hour. And some of us were doing that from the age of 14. So by the time you're 30, you're free to burn out and retire really early. So welcome to my house. I get to chill most days. I, it's enough if you don't overspend. I don't buy BMWs. I don't pay for private planes. Don't really, you know, I occasionally spend on a vacation in the Caribbean. I like going down there. Um, but yes. Some of us know how to live well and how to speed run capitalism. Not a fan, but if you speed run it correctly, you don't have to participate as much. So, just saying, when you're working your ass off tomorrow, I'll be waking up at like 1.30 in the afternoon and, you know, getting my day started. So, sweetheart, don't tell me, talk to me about gainful employment. I ran a highly successful uh, information technology consulting company for the Las Vegas Valley for a bunch of years. So, if you want to measure dicks, if you want to talk about gainful employment, I'm probably not the dude to do it with, right? Like, this is, this is the thing. You'll be working tomorrow. I'm retired. And I still look like this. So maybe put it back in your pants and realize. Actually, more sunshine. They basically won life so much so that they're not forced to go to war. And they choose to sleep in. Yeah. Till noon. Like, why would you wake you up at six a.m.? No you can be just as productive at a different hour of the day. And given I live in Las Vegas, be frank, the middle of our day is kind of miserable. Nighttime, it's like 75, 80 degrees out. It's lovely. You find, and it's Las Vegas, so it's a twenty-four hour city anyway. Um, there's a wildlife there is more active at night too. It Humans is. would have naturally been on a more nighttime clock. Yes. The, the city is on a nighttime clock. You go out, like I go out at night and there's other people jogging. There's, you know, people riding their bikes. Stores are open. The city runs on a different Few schedule. times I ever got to go to California or Hawaii, night jogging was the nicest thing ever. Just like walking out at night, it's still ripping hot and it feels amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it's, you know, yeah, it, it gets bad sometimes. Like, dead of summer, end of July here. Dude, it's midnight, and it's still 100 degrees. It's fucking ridiculous. It gets bad here in, in the dead of the summer. But, I mean, that's when the most productive time of the day is. So, a lot of us live on that schedule. And people who work within service industries of the city, oftentimes, especially if you're in any sort of repair in IT, we had to work the night shift, right? Graveyard is the only option, usually, uh, with minor exceptions. Um, what am I going to uh, do? Tell a client who, you know, makes $25 million a year just selling flowers to take down their entire network so I can work on it in the middle of the day? No, 
that's not how that works. Basically, they look at you and say, all right, you can do it off hours over the weekend. All right, fine. So from Friday after hour, like after they shut down to Monday a.m., you're working. It's just how it rolls. It's part of the gig. And you get used to it. So... Um, all right, so... Do we have to get their sunshine off? What happened? I don't know. Um... Spineless. I don't know. One of you looks like Tony Hawk, and the other looks like Gary Oldman, and the Tony Hawk looks like Gary Oldman. Oh. Um, Capitalist Cuck. Um... <laughs> Kira's saying they're boyfriends now. Um... That's your ass. Farthest I've been in California was Joshua Tree. Oh, yeah. Caboose at uh, <laughs> a fucking community that could accommodate my uh, shitty sleep schedule. We could. We could. Uh, Caboose. Um, Vegas is Actually, a weird place. I have a feeling like it only restrains our economy demanding every business work on the same time schedule, too. Yeah, it's I, I have I have for years, for years, I have maintained there is a multi-million dollar doctoral practice to be set up in this town if you come and you set up a doctor's office and you run it the opposite of business hours. Oh, absolutely. I'm All of the casino workers that work the day shift that have no time off would come to you at night. Like, it, it, this town would gobble that up. This is literally, you want you want a million dollar idea, set up a doctor's office in Las Vegas that services this city after hours. Because right now, we don't have any. All of the doctor's offices in this town run on standard bank hours. And I'm telling you right now, there is millions to be made off of that service. Well, this would be 100 here. Like, I could be talking on my ass, but, like, to me, I think if there were like a nighttime doctor's office people would feel comfortable going to them if say their things were far more embarrassing and they would want to avoid running into people they may know during the day we have um uh concierge doctors for that in this town <laughs> but yes the average... right, you guys are very private <laughs> yeah we we have we have a fair amount of concierge doctors actually in this town um I've got, within spitting distance of my house, I've got probably a half a dozen concierge doctor's offices. Yeah. Um, I think the cheapest one is something like $4,500 a year um, up front. Uh, and then, like, one of the more expensive ones, I think, I God, what was she? I priced her out. She was something like $25,000 a year. But that's 24 hours a day, seven day a week, is unlimited access to your doctor. You, oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Kaiser, I'm taking it back. Fuck those Boogaloo boys. I want Hawaiian shirts back. I'm taking them Fuck back. Fuck the Boogaloo boys. Hawaiian shirts mean nothing but a good time. Um. Yeah, around here, if you have a regular job, you can't make it to the car parts store without taking time off early. Um, I'm poor. I have a cultural bias against doctors. I understand that entirely. Yep. Under a capitalist model of healthcare, uh, under a capitalist for-profit model of healthcare, if you don't have money, you're fucked. I mean, I got to tell you, like, I'm not poor, poor. Like, I'm not, like, I just know how to spend well right like i know how to save a little and spend a little right like i'm not worth a shit ton of money but i don't have to work um but even i like am uncomfortable with the prices of the u.s healthcare system like i'm I, i've said it before the way my disease progression is going i'll be bled dry before i'm dead we need medicare for all and real Medicare, not Canadians, like, fronting crap. Get coverage so that if, say, you get a tooth knocked out, you're still covered. 
yeah, dental care, mental, um, dental, eye, uh, dental vision, and mental are all part of your health, right? Like this is this is something we need to revisit apparently because uh, American insurance companies and other countries to a certain extent, I know Canada is this way, um, break these up into segregated uh, insurances. And so, no, we need one universal blanket coverage. Mm. Uh, dental and mental, no good for me. Waiting for the eyes to go. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Wait for two. You're poor and American. Yeah, that's, there's, there's fair, there's very rarely a worse combination in this world than to be poor and American. <laughs> like, if you're rich and American, things are fairly gravy. Uh, if you're poor and American, it's pretty fucked. So. If you're really rich in American, okay, then you live on the top. Um, but you probably don't live in America. Then. Oh yeah. Uh, fucking, if somebody wants to argue fucking Medicare for all right now, I'll probably just call them an idiot and move on with my life. Uh, a lot of we have here. We have free, free health care. Still, fuck doctors. They're uh, evil as fucks and other bigotry too. Uh, uh, look, what's? I get it. It's just not comfortable. <laughs> I'm moving past it. Anyway, um, I'm wondering how Anarchism works in a doctor's office now. Um, look at uh, free clinics. In and around areas, look at, uh, you can't look at them anymore. They've ruined their shit. Um, but yeah, I, it's a good day. It's a halfway decent day. Um, I'm going to have to fucking, I'm going to have to really push the protein tonight because I can feel it in my legs. I, I pushed those and I pushed the arms. I'm, I'm basically, I'm sore to one extent or another. My core is still sore from yesterday's workout. Um, I, I couldn't believe I started this dude's fucking core workout and three minutes in, I was angry. It was angry. I was like, what, who, how, how explain to me how, just explain to Are me how able to move in the way. Imagine a dude who looks like early Arnold, Arnold Schwarzenegger, but with the flexibility mm -hmm. of a gymnast. The fuck? Okay, so this motherfucker is like, okay, so all you need to do is go like, okay, so just bend up this way, perfectly straight legs. I mean, literally perfectly straight legs and then lock the abdomen. Okay, so this is our starting position for the exercise, right? Like, how are you doing that? Like, it was, it was impressive how brutal and no stops, no breaks. Forget like 15 seconds between exercises. Forget 40 seconds between exercises. No. One exercise into the next, into the next. And they all involved some sort of um, flexion, uh, in a, uh, like flexion uh, enabled uh, exercise. So you were contracted the entire way through for like 10 minutes straight. I was just like, how is this even possible? I was angry trying to get through it to the point where... I went to, uh, I, I went, uh, I left and did a different core workout that I already knew. Like, I was like, no, I, I, I'm incapable of doing this. And frankly, I think 99% of the athletes out there would be incapable of doing this. Like it was, it, yeah, like legitimately made me angry. Hey, so it's it like flexing. Yeah. Okay. So sit your, uh, don't, don't. Sit your ass on the floor, lay flat, all right? Pick your legs up, bring them up. Uh, so laying flat on the floor, pick your legs up and bring them to about this position, all right? Hold them there. Then you're going to come up with uh, on your abdomen. So you're going to crunch at the lower abdominal uh, range, right? Hold that. That's your starting position for the workout. I can't even get into it. Yes, please. With your back, don't do that. Please don't try. Um, hey, Wither. Sorry, nobody. I'm sorry you didn't get a notification. It was in Discord. 
Um, and I mean, I got the, um, I got the, uh, uh, the Twitch notification. So sorry. I didn't hit you, hit you though. Um, all of you fools who rely on an algorithm to let you know when yes, put a timer on, <laughs> there is a schedule. Um, I'll play devil's advocate. If we do Medicare for all, then how will insurance CEOs pay for the second yacht that goes in their first yacht? You can't have yachtless yachts says public. Uh, public, that is true. My solution to this is that there are no more CEOs. That's that. That's the solution. It's not to get rid of the yachts. It's to get rid of the CEOs. Ah. Actually, we want the yachts. We're gonna they're gonna be used as like community thank yous when like businesses do really successful and they like boost the economy of a local town. A yacht comes in and just takes takes everyone they can out for a party. Um, Caboose is yelling at you too, by the way, to like, why are you even trying that? <laughs> Ow. <laughs> yeah, no, fair, fair, yeah. fair. Uh, but who will do the innovation? Oh, for Toos. Oh, you're right. Uh, you is, to do note though, I actually was a gymnast as a child. I have quite a notorious range of flexibility. It's just entirely painful doing it. Um, you, do you want to make the yachts orphans? Uh, well, with all of those orphan yachts, what we will do is we will give them new homes. And as I'm sure on some of those mega yachts, we definitely can set up some floating communities. So maybe, maybe some of these homeless people want to live on a yacht in the Mediterranean. Right? Maybe they want to live on a yacht in the in the Gulf, right? Or the Caribbean. Why not we make actual retirement communities where people who love to fish literally can fish? Um Yeah. Uh I I just on a side note, the protein content per gram of fish is poor. <laughs> um yeah, I was looking at uh, like I was looking at the the protein conversions for uh, some smoked salmon, and I was like, this is not great. <laughs> like, I don't I don't know why fish is such a, a staple protein for so much of the world. We really need to get on the insect train. I agree. I would rat like. People call me gross, but I would not be against eating, like, churned-up roaches that are so finely mushed that I can't even tell that they were crunchy. Yeah, like, cricket cricket flour is already a thing. Is there protein in the flour, or does it lose most of that? Oh, no, it's, yeah, no, it's 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 high in protein. It's higher per capita in protein uh, than, uh, um, like, red meat. Um, uh, let's see. Let me get to uh, pull some stats here. Uh, there, cricket protein. Oh, that's just a fucking. There we go. I just want the protein. Bug bread here, everyone. Who wants your bug loaf? Fresh cricket ten, roach up in your bread. Come ten, get it. Ten grams. for you. Ten grams of crickets contains seven grams of protein. That's it. It's a huge amount. Um, Holy shit, actually. Yeah. They are that is super rich in protein. Okay, isn't that, like, comparable to, like, a... Um, what's the bean I'm trying to think of? Uh, chickpea. There's a... Um, a Wobbles. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I'm taking them back. I'm taking the Hawaiian shirt back from the Boogaloo Boys. I'm fucking sick of Hawaiian... Sh those racist nut jobs trying to foment a fucking civil war in this country and they get associated with Hawaiian shirts. You know what? Hawaiian shirts are amazing and I refuse to let them be associated with those idiots. So I'm taking them back. I'm rocking the, uh, the Hawaiian shirt. Um, and thank you, Wobbles. Um, so one thing that kind of gets me about the I will not eat the bugs crowd, you're not literally eating bugs, you're eating products made from bugs, you literally won't even fucking tell. Oh, Karina, thank you for the resub. Um, one of the few tier twos that we have. Um, uh, RZ, uh, 
depends on the insect, actually. Um, for the crickets, they remove the uh, the hind legs, um, and then they uh, they dehydrate and or freeze dry, depending on whose process you're dealing with, and then grind into a powder. I'm surprised they would remove the hind legs, but I guess if it's only uh, chitin, then yeah, you would want to. It, yeah, they're 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 not really great to eat. Um, depending on whose preparation. See, that's the thing is, uh, I like to have all of the fiber. Um, the low end of like cricket, like if you just ate a cricket, right? Like if you just ate like chipolines, uh, chipolines uh, out of like Oaxaca, Mexico, you're looking at like fifty eight percent protein. Um, just for the cricket, but in things like cricket flour, um, they're processed, so they have um, 70% protein. So a good portion of the non-protein containing pieces of the uh, cricket by weight are removed. And so the protein, uh, the protein ratio increases as a result of that. Uh, I'll stick frog legs for the no I'll stick with frog legs from the nonce. Um, racist nut job stealing symbols is they can't make their own uh, more likely than you think it is Wolata. it happens all the time uh, earthworms are a great option they can recycle organic matter to produce fertilizer then they can ma be made in flour rectubator um, welcome and yes uh, could I snort the roach powder I mean you could but it's not really water soluble so it's just going to end up in a drip in the uh it's going to end up in a post nasal drip and it's going to have to run down the back of your throat which probably isn't going to be pleasant if i were to wager a guess um and yes rev better protein yield per water usage than any animal um yeah it, it really is the future to a huge degree and like, i mean you can here i'll even like you can just uh, uh, let's pop that out. There we go. Um, here's one of the manufacturers of it. Here's Send. Um, so, there you go. 70% protein, 20% healthy fats, more omega-3 and omega-6 than salmon. Um, chitin for fiber, gut health. Um, micronutrients, iron, calcium, zinc, B12, and of course the lack of antibiotics, no super bacteria risk, um, and no like zoological cross species diseases such as, you know, coronavirus, swine flu, mad cow, that sort of stuff. And then 2000 times less water than, um, beef steak, 15 times percent, uh, 15 times less land, 12, uh, 12 times less feed, um, yeah, you know, and hundred times less greenhouse gases. And this is just one manufacturer. You can cross reference these with like Health Line and fucking other other people talking about this matter. But the fact of the, uh, the fact of the matter is, um, it they are a, a premium source, and they um, they recycle bio waste such as like if you have like uh, rice bran. Or anything else left over, like any any sort of organic matter left over from your uh, your processes, the crickets can consume that as well. Most many insects will, so they they can you know at, be added in a loop. Uh, they can be added in a, uh, a feed cycle change, so you can a uh, chain, so you can uh, help create a loop out of that. Plus, their uh, their byproduct, uh, cricket for, uh, cricket poop is a highly valued fertilizer. So even their, um, Miss Rogers writes, welcome. Thank you for the follow. Um, so yeah, they're, I honestly, we just need to get people over the fact that they're eating bugs. And I mean, you already eat seafood. If you eat seafood, then you're already eating something very, very close to a bug. So civic cat coffee. Yep. You're, that's fucking that that is shit coffee um 
Uh, it's also they're always the same type of people too who never even think about what they're already eating. Like, you ever see sushi and then look at what natural seaweed looks and feels like? That shit is some of the grossest stuff ever, in my opinion. Fair enough. Nope. Tried out, suddenly now it's fine and edible. Um, yeah, that's fair. I actually prefer the uh, I prefer the seaweed before the drying. I don't know if you've ever had like fresh seaweed in like a salad. Uh, that's how it was. Okay, per- yeah, that hit a bad spot for me. <laughs> Just imagining that. <laughs> uh, farm raised tilapia. That's fine if you're running aquaponics, uh, Patriot. Um, I'll snort the roach powder. I must become a bug god. Good luck with that, Devil Boy. Uh, I wonder if prawns from Aquaponic Farm could compare. I mean, not in the protein department for Toos, but I mean, it's a lot better than some of the shit out there. Okay, but like, how good would it be if it just turns out that cicadas are super high in protein and the East Coast is like, just randomly gets over the Well, fucking cic- cicadas are high in protein. Um, most insects are. And you guys are invaded by the biggest food source in 14 years. Um, that's, that's the, the cycle is the problem. Like the breeding cycle on them. But I mean, you know, while you're, while they're around, why not? You could also try and farm and propagate better cycles though. Um, that's my only thing is like, you could try and farm them. So let's see. Anybody's house to shake from the bugs? I saw a couple of videos of that happening. Just trying to find their, um, the cicadas protein content. But it doesn't look like it's actually been studied that much. I mean, yeah, they're a good source of protein, but nobody's giving me a specific number, so. Um... I'm sure I've eaten worse. There was this one time I was trying to make pasta on a campfire, but there was all these goddamn gnats. Oh, yeah, ref. Just just added protein. Whether, uh, okay, what if we got together and made a commune, but our whole thing was a bug farming processor? We could save America from evil food corpos. Whether, be the change you wish to see in this world. Um. Hey. hey two months later, news report. Man's house overrun by live insects, saying planning to invest in future bug farming. And hey there, only invested Angie. in the insects. <laughs> uh, hey, Angie. Um, happy to do it. Um, uh, citric acid in most drinks are made from black mold poop. Um, if we go breed more crickets, will it start one of the infamous plagues of the old musty book? <laughs> um, my grandmother apparently taught hula in Hawaii, which I'm not sure how to feel about given she was white as shit. Been white people there. I mean, look, there have been white people in Hawaii for a while now. Um, it's just part of the culture at this point. Um, For Pete's sake, the luau as you know it is entirely westernized. The dance, like you, a lot of people like always go to, has been super simplified for the sake of like tourists to learn it with ease. Um, hey Cassidy. Oh, yeah, uh, uh, Patriot, I think Thailand fries grasshoppers and all that. Uh, Southeast Asia does a whole host of uh, insects. They're not afraid of them. If you're in America, the easiest way to get your hands on, like, to, to come into contact with a culture that eats insects natively would be Mexico. Um, go to Oaxaca, get a bag of chupilenes, Get a fucking, like, get a couple of cervezas, just kick back and enjoy, right? They are, they are fried uh, grasshoppers with uh, chili, lime, salt, um, and they are delicious, and they're a perfect bar snack. They're crispy, crunchy, salty, sour, spicy, like, they're, they're everything that people want in a bar snack, and they're amazing, um, and they're good for you at the end of the day. They're a lot better for you than chips or anything like that. Um, soldier fly larvae. Uh, yeah, Cassie fucking probably gets down on a lot of this kind of stuff. Um, why are we eating bugs now? Because they're good for you. Um, uh, 
Man, I was hoping if the only desert, like, true to a desert in uh, Canada would eat bugs. No. Not even a soyists. Or pansies for now, at least. Uh, they had different bugs inside you could eat. It was probably for children. Interesting. Uh, interesting, RZ. Um... Oh, yeah, that makes sense. I, was I just, would I was just looking actually... At, sorry, go ahead. I was just looking at these comments here. Bugs are lame. It's not like we need to eat bugs anyhow. We can just eat less high-waste meat like beef. Coming from the person who, on their previous visit here, said, I just had three crispy chicken sandwiches, 20 um, uh, McNuggets, fries, and a Coke, and then a McFlurry. Okay, so, like, you are the problem. You're the reason we need to eat bugs because we have now gotten our current day humans super reliant on an excess amount of protein and meat, and we need a cheaper, less harmful to the environment source of that meat. That's why we're saying we need to eat bugs. PG, it's not that <laughs> you eating the food and not wasting it. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the food was produced in the first place. And it didn't need to be. It's excessive. We have way too many farm animals so that you can feel your glut. So I can feel my glut. So that Kai can look skinny. Like, come on. <laughs> um, are they really? Um, I mean, is that like, I mean, that would be badass. Um, What's going on? I think they're just like they're fucking around though. Yeah, because I see no reference to that. That would be epically badass if uh, Chipotle offered uh, Chipolinas. That would be a huge fucking deal. If because that's a that's that's an entry. That's a foot in the door for Americans. Even if they do it just to, like, even if there's just a generation of, like, dudes who eat it so they can gross out their, like, their girlfriend or their, their parents or something like that, right? Like, even... I shooting! I know I live in a shitty part of... Come on! I, I, I would... That would be really badass if Chip, uh, if Chipotle offered that sort of thing. Yeah, like, Patriot, like, joking, but a cool idea, right? Like, they're... they're that would work. Like, do a test run. See how it see how it plays out. Do a fucking Chipolinas burrito or something, right? Like, it would be it would be a really good idea uh, if we could push that a little forward. Hmm. Bugs are small. It's my only issue. Whether if I make a bug farm, I might make an aquaponics first. Dude, aquaponics was a really fun project. Um, I mean, it's, you're going to throw some money at it, but in the long run, it's super productive and was really fascinating as a learning and building, like just as a learning experience. Yeah. <laughs> if anyone doesn't know, insects are extremely interesting for their capability of being able to deconstruct their entire body and reconstruct it basically off of blueprints during molting processes. Uh, this is why they're some of the most easiest to genetically modify animals on Earth. Which means that if we decided to switch to insects as our main food source, we would have domesticated food optimized insects in years versus like 20 years of stabilizing a new meat source out of say like making deer now domesticated yeah like, oh yeah we could, we could genetically breed uh wingless crickets that don't have big back legs but all the same protein in like five years Yep, and uh, and Duffy, you are correct on that. Like, you know, people talk about bugs being gross, but we already use bacterial cultures in so many food products already. It's, you know, ugh, fucking. Um, I'm sorry, cheese. Uh, peach aquaponics is really hard to get to work. It isn't. It, it, there's a learning curve. 
don't get me wrong. I'm not saying this is something that you can do overnight. This isn't something you're going to go to Lowe's and have working over a weekend. There's a learning curve. But to describe it as really hard, I, th- hard, I think, is a little disingenuous. I think, I, I don't think it's that hard. I, I think it's just a little bit of study. But maybe my metrics and standards are a little bit different, uh, different than other people's. I don't know. Um, I'm used to my projects um, being complicated. So, you know, you have some electrical, you have some plumbing, you have some um, animal husbandry, you have some gardening, you have some uh, biology and microbiology, uh, chemistry as well. Um, Yeah, but I don't, you know, you're not being asked to do a PhD dissertation on the matter. It's just a matter of keeping certain nutrients and certain compound, uh, certain chemicals within balance within the tank system and understanding flow rates and patterns and that sort of thing. But this is something anybody can pick up. I, I have confidence in human beings. I don't, I don't think this is, this isn't launching a rocket to the moon territory. Um, RZ, that was also really interesting about the feathers, by the way, meat from feathers using um, acid hydrolysis. Um, <laughs> uh, fair enough, Walada. CEOs are bacterial cultures. Um, yeah, not, not too complex, just a process. Um, e- there's, I get this weird visual whenever I think of like CEOs as a natural thing because it's like I think of them like a leech, but they're obviously way bigger. So it's more like an octopus where every one of its tentacles was a leech and it's just super fucking fat and attached to as many goddamn hosts as it can. Um, and fair enough, a lot of. Uh, know thyself. Fair enough. Actually, speaking of. Um, just lost the word. Uh, hydro growing plants, like where they're suspended hydroponics. Water to an extent. Thank you, hydroponics. I, uh, I'm i going to be taking it up myself next year. I'm going to probably fail, but I'm okay to do it. I want to grow my own weed. Um, yeah, you're fairly north. Indoor grow is best for you. Um, and thank you, sleep. Uh, yeah, this part of the world, if you can get away with it, like not my region, but over in California, dude, if you can do an outdoor grow, you can fucking pounds, no problem. Um, Somebody sent me a picture of their, like, uncle who lives in California and in his flower garden, there's just weed. Nice. Um, yep, exactly with her. Uh, hey, RV, uh, failure is a good thing. Uh, Cassie said, chickens tend to pluck each other's feathers and eat them when their diets are low in protein because the feathers are high in protein. Um, most of the strains in Canada can survive the first frost outdoors. No problem. Just start them a little early indoors and transfer outside. Good to know Duffy. If I ever get in that part of the world again. Um, yeah. Um, fix the food people. (laughs) Fix the fucking food. Either way. Um, I'm sure, um, it's a problem. A lot of this food is addictive. And that's an element of it that, like, we don't, like, again, I'm not recanting my previous rants on another episode about, at the end of the day, it is calories in, calories out, and willpower. I am not changing my position on any of that. There's no way around that. Heroin's addictive. And for an addict to stop doing heroin, they have to have willpower assistance. But at the end of the day, it's a decision that they make, and it's the willpower that they uh, put into the process that gets them off of it. Um, a lot of this, they're not going to quit. Yeah. That's just the truth of the matter. But a lot of this stuff is engineered to be addictive. That's, I mean, this food isn't like, it isn't cooked so much as it is engineered and natural flavor. Yeah. Um, yes. Oh yeah. 
Duffy. Um, I my favorite example to this day is when Coke uh, Coca Cola ran an fMRI study on um, Coke drinkers to see if there was a dope uh, dopamine response to seeing their advertising, and they confirmed there was. So basically, there was uh, there was a hit of dopamine every time one of their uh, the Coke drinkers actually saw an advertisement for Coke. That's that's how strong the 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 addictive cycle is for some of this stuff. It's absolutely ridiculous. And so, yeah, I, I do think that there's a little more um, responsibility within the industry would go a long ways. But I mean. You feed a fucking two-year-old flaming hot Cheetos, they're fucked. They're fucked. There's very little coming back from that. If you grew up not knowing real food and you've had that sort of engineered hyper food your entire life, the wiring for your brain is going to respond differently to different things than somebody who grew up on like a Mediterranean diet. It's just the way it is. So we do have generations of people who are on, by the way, I don't know if anybody knows this, but as far as nutrition, uh, nutritionists and dietitians are concerned, the acronym that they use for the American diet is SAD. It's the standard American diet. SAD. That's literally the accepted term for the American diet is SAD. Um, what we got? Oh, I saw that one. Let's see. Um, uh, probably full of mercury from eating fish. Uh, I eat shit, but I try to eat healthy at times. Um, I had grilled zucchini and hamburgers for dinner. Oh, good for you, Duffy. That's something. Mitre, it is sad. No, that's they're not. the 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 irony <clears throat> is, you know, the humor isn't lost on them, and it's it's a dark joke. It's a dark joke. the The American diet is sad. Just call it what it is. Uh, it can't do much until they actually make sweeping legislation that controls companies and what they put in our food. I. I don't know whether this is, I, I don't know if this is, you know, chicken or the egg sort of situation. I, uh, I, I don't mean, know what came first, but I know we have to just cold turkey stop it. Or the next gens are going to be even worse hooked on it. And we are going to, they're going to, I'm afraid the future generations will vomit when they eat natural food. Yeah, I've, I've, no, I've scrolled down. Like, I did that already. And, yeah, I posted the first one and shared content today. And fucking, whoever that doggo idiot is, I'm pretty sure I fucking posted something by their dumb ass earlier today as well. Um. Oh, yeah, yeah, Okay, so it was doggo that fucking put that first one up. Um, yeah, I've seen a few of these. Uh, but, yeah, this fucking doggo idiot. Um. So congratulations, all those who live in, like, Eastern Europe, India, Africa, South America. There are, there's no police violence there. This, this is your brain on tanky. I, I just, fucking. I, I was actually going to say, like, why is every communist country left out there? And then I saw the flags next to the name. Yeah. Fuck it. Um, yeah, there's no police violence in Colombia, Israel, or Nigeria. Exactly. 100%. Um, yeah. Uh, Whether not only can humans eat raw meat, they do all the time. Um, carpaccio, uh, to beef, tar eat raw beef tartare. Human meat and be fine. Just don't touch the fucking brain. Um, <laughs> hey there, Taz. Hey Taz, try not to oh, get Taz. Taz, try not to get me suspended too. <laughs> uh, um, yes, Rev, there is. Uh, traditionally, there is also raw egg in steak tartare. Um, 
wither because of prions, a prion disease, not a way to go. Not the way you want to go. Yeah. That's not the point, Peach Peach Pie. That person is an avowed, announced, proud, unironic tanky. They firmly believe that there is no such thing as police violence outside of Western imperialist nations. Prions, P-R-I-O-N-S, uh, with her. Yeah, Peach, we're actually familiar with this person. We're familiar with this group of people as well, as a community and as various individuals. We know what their take is about. They're not talking about the Western news cycle. They're talking about a literal worldview in which only bad happens in white countries. That's it. Fucking Cassie, listen what kind of chickens they have and shit. Hey. You know what? Peach Pie, I agree with you. We actually can't help tankies half the time. They they are extremely authoritarian. They believe and dumb. that, like, they kiss the boot of the state so that it can hold your hand. Like, what you believe we think, the tankies advocate far more than we would. But they would also be it is that, in return, you're now basically a soldier of the state. Oh, but Mitre, you bit. Oh, wait, was that? Did they? Oh, no, no. You're you're included. Yeah, you're a colonizer country, Mitre. That's just how that works. Um. Hey, Caboose. Thanks for doing some heavy lifting there. Um. Did Cat tell you about the strong suspicion infrared is a four chan psyop? Oh yeah, we've. I mean, it's been suspected that there is potential for infrared to be a 4chan psyop from the beginning. And Kat's been talking about it from the beginning. I will give credit where credit's due. Um, yeah, so... Uh, is there is there evidence that has come to light that I'm... Um, I don't... You just cut yourself off there, bud. We didn't even get the end of that joke. <laughs> oh, I love the Juche idiots. I love them. They are my they're they're just adorable. Hey, you know what's the solution? Monarchism authoritarian monarchism with red aesthetics that's the solution well rugrats in paris juchi fucking rip sorry man i mean right out of the gate you were making Shit, like you were literally t making uh, like TOS stuff, your fucking vi calls to violence and shit like that. Fucking brutal, swift, butt of the gun sort of shit. Um, and I love that. Our beloved leader can never be wrong. Oh, man. Uh, Zippy, Juche isn't just a person. It's a philosophy as well. It's the North Korean philosophy. It's basically uh, monarchism with communist aesthetics. It's absolutely batshit insane. And there's people who, like, literally think that this is a good idea. Um, they're, they're special. Um, poorly educated. That's the thing. They, they tend to be, like, well-educated, just not properly educated i guess like they they tend to have like middle class upbringings they tend to be like white suburban attorneys and shit like that looking at you mel um and then they espouse this crazy ass philosophy that you're just like yeah you know what'd be great you know what we need is a violent dictatorial leader who will squash any resistance with utter brutal violence 
Yeah, that's definitely the philosophy we want to encourage. For sure. Yeah. Hey, thank you to follow MLZ. Um, yeah, so, yeah, Juche is a philosophy unto itself. And Juche is a person as well. They're, we. It's difficult to keep track of the person, Juche. But the philosophy, yeah. Fucking weird. Um... Zippy, yeah, Zippy, pretty much, right? <laughs> Zippy, I'm okay with that as long as I get to be the dictatorial leader, right? Like, that's basically how it works. And I think a lot of them, like, because there's vanguardism in those sorts of thing situations as well, so I think a lot of them think, like, they'd be, like, on the party committee or something like that, and so they'd get special treatment. Um, can I have a turn after Zippy? Karina, you can just ask. Um... You can have a little dictatorship as a treat. Um, I wouldn't be it in the first place, Peach. I wouldn't want that position. I would do my, all of, like I if if you forced me into that position, I would do everything within my power to make sure that position doesn't exist. That's it. I, I would do everything to destroy the existence of that system in that position. It, it's. Do you believe in this shit either? Like, I mean, like, it's a terrible ideology. Uh, I was in a class where people were defending the Indian caste system. That sounds fun. Until I pointed out we were at a community college. They're cool with it until they figure out what caste they're in. <laughs> Jackasses. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of that that goes around. Americans are pretty guilty of that shit, too. Uh, you know, defending the billionaire class. It's like, you do realize you're never going to be a billionaire, right? Uh, easy. No, Mel is actually uh, Mel is actually like a Stalinist ML territory. A little bit of Stalinist, a little bit of Maoist, but definitely like... like how would I put this? Uh, revolutionary ML territory. All while being a, like, privileged white, uh, a privileged white girl from the suburbs who has, uh, who has, like, a legal uh, degree and shit like that. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um... <laughs> the guy in the back of the room... It's a long username, but I kind of like it. I kind of dig it. Um, so you aren't American? I mean, yes, technically. Uh, yeah, yes, but, uh, Bregman, the uh, uh, the guy who, what was that? That was uh, Davos, the economist who fucking tore into him at Davos and then tore into Tucker Carlson. Millionaires defending billionaires. Um, I'm almost curious of that male person. She seems famous. Well, a lot of, she is famous for really, really bad takes. Yeah. Shit like Stalin never killed anybody. Mao was the, uh, Mao freed more people than shit like that. Right. Stalin didn't kill anybody. Wow. My great, great grandpa would be very, very guess you would say he would have a lot of words to say if he wasn't dead by Stalin. Uh, let's see. Or at least the war he had going on. Um... It seems like, um, based off of Stalin's biographer, um, Simon Sebag uh, Montefiore, um, if you want to check young Stalin, um, he, um, he was a coward. He never pulled the trigger himself. As near as we can tell, yeah, Stalin always ordered somebody else to do the dirty deed. He um, never got his hands actually dirty. Because he was a punk did they, bitch. Did 
do they think that admonishes him? Um, well, I mean, no, yes, some do. Some think that because he didn't actually kill anybody himself, somehow that absolves him of wrongdoing. But then you just have the crew that comes in and says, like, Charles Manson never killed anybody either. Like, he didn't do the deed either. So it, you don't have to actually pull the trigger to be culpable. Um, but yeah, Stalin, it seems like, was just a punk bitch who never had the guts to pull the trigger himself. Um, Rev, I hit a deer a couple of days ago and I couldn't bring myself to cut its throat and throw it in the back of the trunk, but I still killed, uh, back of the truck, but I still killed it. She did, technically. Um, it's a shame it went to waste, though. Um, oh, hey, hey there, Sue. I think I call. All right, you do you. Uh, let's see. Yeah, no, Lada, you wouldn't. You, you probably wouldn't. She's, she's a piece of work. Let's just put it that way. Um, I become a Maoist every time my landlord pulls some bullshit, then it passes when he leaves. <laughs> Fair enough, Zippy. Fair enough. Um, Yes, Caboose. As far as I'm concerned, yes. Legally and philosophically, ethically speaking, it's the same. Yeah. Um, I, I... Yes, I rem... I'm, I just had to pull up your chat log. All right, so... Uh, Manmaker, feel free. I'm a little loopy from a day of hard exercise, um, but ask. Um, and yeah, I b do believe you uh, You meant anarchism rather than anachronism, but um, yeah, shoot, my man. Hello, Tony. Um, welcome back. Let's see. Yeah, some warlords do the killing themselves. Um, so, um, not much, just Project Kai is what I'm calling it. Um, just later this week, uh, you know, I'm doing the TRT, I've got some fucking HGH stuff happening. Later this week, I've got a meeting with, um, private trainer or personal trainer at a medical, like a sports slash medical facility. Like we're, we're doing a thing. We're doing a thing. Um, Kai's whipping this fucking broken ass body back into shape as best he can. Um, so that's, that's sort of like what my life is filled with at this point is making sure, making sure I meet my macros, making sure that I, you know, do the right routines on the right day and all that sort of stuff. Right. I mean, you remember you used to do this kind of shit. Oh, <sighs> um, All right. <laughs> Your autocorrect does not like uh, anarchism, uh, man maker. Just going for anachronism. Um, It's a, it, it's okay. I'm just working my way through some of your, your comments here, uh, maker. Um, and thanks. Thanks, Tony. Um, all right. Anyway, back to reading. Oh, all right. So, uh, man maker. I'm about to not answer your question and I'm about to give you more homework as an answer. Are you prepared? Because I see where you're headed and it has some inherent. Okay, cool. As long as you're down for it, it has some inherent misunderstandings. Kavasa, are you prepared? Um, Saul Newman, post-anarchism, 
and after post anarchism by uh, Dwayne Roussel. Um, I'll put them in chat for you. Um, I always fucking it, Roussel's name. I can never spell for some reason. Um, Well, the rest of you are exempted from this. You're not asking about moral relativism. Um, yeah, uh, Wilhelm. All right, Wilhelm, this is a brutal read. I'm not going to fucking lie. I'm not going to fucking lie about uh, after post-anarchism. Um this one is about, this one is a literal dive into the technical, philosophical, meta, uh, meta philosophical and meta ethics of the uh, sort of um, Foucaultian power dynamic analysis that is a result of this, of post anarchism. So the fact of the matter, um, well, but that's the thing morality and ethics are two different things. And when you start going down the morality route rather than the meta ethics, uh, the ethics or meta ethics uh, route, then you start to end up in subjectivist territory. Whereas, I mean, ultimately all things are subjective at the end of the day, blah, 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 independent kind of blah. Look, we're not getting it. We're not, we're not doing the philosophical nosedive, right? We're not doing that. But. Um, no, no, Rev, it's not. It's it's actually kind of a rigorous field um, unto itself with it contained as a subset of philosophical endeavors. But, yeah. Um. <laughs> um. All right, so just let me show it. Yeah, okay. Uh, have you considered doing the philosophical nosedive today? No, no, Wither. Not for a moment have I considered doing the philosophical nose nosedive today. Um, hey, without adjectives. Um, and uh, Sue, if you wanted to, I don't know if you're still there, Sue, but if you want to come uh, come by and say hi, you're more than welcome to. Um, Philosophy is philosophy can be cool, um, but it's also sort of the end of the conversation when you start um, when you start doing. Well, that's why I call it the philosophical nosedive. When you end up when the conversation ends up in uh, the sort of philosophical territory, it all becomes subjective. If that's where you end up having the conversation. You start talking epistemological ramifications. You start talking metaethical ramifications. You start talking. It, it becomes highly speculative and highly subjective. And so once you once your conversation like ends up at the philosophical train station, it's it's a nosedive from there, as far as I'm concerned. Um. <laughs> whether yeah i actually did get to hear you a little bit um no no man maker there wasn't an inherent misunderstanding with uh within your uh, well y yes yeah i kind of i kind of guess i have to i have to say that right like um one you have to understand that um why is that okay one, you have to understand that uh, anarchism is about unjust hierarchies, right? It, it, hierarchical structures have to be justified, right? We're not saying a f wholesale elimination of them. We're saying that they have to be justified. Also, we are highly question, uh, we're highly spe uh, uh, suspicious of authority mechanisms and anything that is coercive or oppressive is basically out on its ass, right? But we're not saying that there, there's inherent uh, hierarchical structures that are just. Um, so, again, it's not a wholesale blanket. So there, like your first iteration, like how to organize a meeting. Um, you watched a consensus video. 
I, I don't necessarily know which one you watched. If you watched the one off of my page, then I can comment. Otherwise, I don't know who taught you, you know, which video taught you consensus decision making. Um, then it's uh, there seems to be moral relativism. Manmaker, if I, if you, this is why I'm sending you down this path. It's because you've been waylaid by the concept of moral relativism and you need to go down the sort of like post-anarchist path, which is nothing more than a reclaiming of the original anarchistic tendencies and ideologies, right? So, or philosophies um, rather than ideologies. So you kind of have to understand the the uh, not only ethics but meta-ethics behind it so you don't get waylaid by a conceptualized moral relativism. Um, and so, yeah, and, and three, if you do this, if you actually study this stuff, when you come back, the next thing I'm going to tell you to read is Sterner. Because then, basically, Sterner will cure you of the, uh, of any morality, if you perceive morality within your anarchistic ten, uh, within your anar anarchistic philosophies, Sterner is basically the bleach to that bacteria. Yeah. Oh my boy. Um. Yeah. So, read about post-anarchism, and then read uh, "Ego and Its Own" by Sterner. And you'll sort of grasp these concepts a lot better. But no, there isn't actually moral relativism going on because the fact of the matter is is that your moral relativism didn't exist in the first place. And you need you need egoism and sternerism to understand that. And you uh, then you need to understand that you need something like a Foucaultian di power dynamic analysis um, to understand that. So there's a few prerequisites going on here. But long and short, no, there isn't actually moral relativism occurring because it's not actually a thing in the first place. But that's an analysis and a breakdown for another day. So, yeah. Um, I can, like, right off the top, you uh, you know what you need to know about the, the, the hierarchical structure, right? Uh, anarchists are advocates for hierarchical structures, but there is going to be some inherent hierarchical structures. And the classic example is a parent walking along with a child, grabbing the uh, child's arm and twisting it while they pull them out of traffic because a truck is about to fucking careen into them, right? That is an authoritative a hierarchical structure that just uh, what came into play, and it it is seen as just within anarchistic spaces, right? This is a classic example. So we're not wholesale abolition. Oh yes, without adjectives, yes, yes. I want the fucking Hawaiian shirts back. This is my favorite Hawaiian shirt, by the way. Um, I want it back. Okay, so it was. All right, it was off the cheat sheet. All right, cool, 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 cool. Oh, legs are sore. Dom's kicking in. <laughs> Fair enough, me try. I... As long as that social hierarchy doesn't uh, devolve, Mitre, into something that is malignant, for lack of a better term. <laughs> Cassie, oh, fucking. <sighs> yeah. Yes, delayed onset uh, muscle soreness, you degenerate fucks. Love you. Fell out. Oh, uh, without adjectives. 
I think I, I don't even I don't even I wouldn't go 90% correct with Sterner. Like Sterner is like bleach. Fine to use in small quantities for certain things. Right? Like it is it is highly curative and can fix a lot of situations. Um, but it is potent and it goes a long ways. And if you use too much of it, it tends to burn you. All right? Like, yeah. But that's the thing with Sterner. He wasn't wrong. He was just an asshole. Which I see as sort of an extension of his philosophy anyway, so... Never free base Sterner. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just don't free base Sterner. You'll be fine. Oh. Mm, a little bit of a tension headache, too. When I was out running, I... Um, Uh, globalism without adjectives. Nationalism is cringe and its time has come as far as I'm concerned. Um, but a little bit, 15%, a little bit of nationalism goes a long ways. Again, see the bleach analogy? You know, you, you don't, a little bit can do a lot of work. We just have too much. Uh, Zippy, um, I, just running, uh, just out for a run. Um, yeah, when I was out running earlier today, like a whole section, the whole right side of my body started getting like cramps and stuff because I, I just wasn't oxygenating correctly because it's been years since I've actually run and I sort of had to fix my breathing patterns while I was out running. It's been a while, but you know, I just had to spend a lap paying attention to my breathing patterns and fix them. But I mean, it's still sort of tensioned up my neck a little bit so I've got a little bit of a tension headache um oh. so who is Juchi uh who are they they seem to probably be a a, 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 a um, alt account for somebody we know right is that what's going on there RV okay All right. You do you, Karina. Glad it went well. <laughs> Info, welcome back. Um, thank you, Estrella. We're taking Hawaiian shirts back from the Boogaloo boys. It's a thing we're doing. Mm. Oh, it's non-compete. Oh, it's non-compete. Oh. Okay. Um... Manmaker, that is one take on anarchistic social structures from non-compete, who is a type of anarchist, right, to some extent. He's married to it. His partner is a full-blown ML. So imagine that relationship. Yes, exactly. Straight. All anarchists think one thing. Um, Hawaiian shirts and pina... Pina coladas. Uh, Zippy, I'm more of a sangria person, but, you know, when in Rome, I suppose. Um, yeah, make Hawaiian shirts chill again. 100%. Yeah, so, yeah, Maker, what you have to understand is that hive mind anarchism. There's something to think about there with Ohelm, actually. Um... 
<sighs> Non-compete and Vosh. Dude, I'm totally an anarchist. Trust me. Um, you have to understand, Man Maker, that I, I'll quote Emma Goldman at you for this purpose. There, uh, there is no uh, singular utopia, uh, utopic existence. of. Uh, there is no single utopic anarchism. Uh, there is no single... Uh, there's no single expression of anarchism, a uh, utopic anarchism, because it isn't a monolithic philosophy. It's a network of ideas, and we much prefer it that way, right? It's anarchism is inherently individualistic, right? There is mutualist anarchism. There is co a communalist anarchism for sure, but inherently, the benefits to the social group is given through the rise of individual autonomy, and through that individual autonomy, there rises uh, there arises many forms of anarchism and many ways to practice it, and that is tantamount to understanding that there is essentially uh, as many anarchists as there are. There's probably different forms of anarchism. It is about the individual at the end of the day. And so you have to understand that. That is one person's view. And it's fairly well done. I've seen what you've, uh, what you, uh, the link that you've, uh, you put, you threw my way, Maker. Um, I have watched that series before uh, as well. Been a minute. Um, but yeah. Uh, apparently he's just this libertarian socialist now, which is more accurate for him. Yeah, that feels right. Um, there, see, that's the thing, Arzy. There is no utopian anarchism. Like, it just doesn't exist because there is no project of projects for anarchists. After you get together with a bunch of people, you have to figure out what, you, what you're going to do. You can't prefigure uh, anarchist societies like that. So, I don't know who that is uh, without adjectives. Oh, no, wait. Are you talking about, like... I mean, are you talking about the industrial intelligence company? Like, I mean... Because, I mean, Anarch... Uh, like, uh, the... Uh, yeah, they, they're a tech company. Oh, yeah, no. No, without any tips, I'd have no fucking clue who they are then. Yeah, like, Anarch is... Um, a fucking here. I'll I'll get you there. <clears throat> here. This is this is literally this is this is who Anarch is. If for somebody coming from the IT field, like this is who Anarch is. So yeah, I'm I'm unfamiliar with the YouTube. A uh, YouTuber by that name. <gasps> Cruise! That's a really good idea! I would love to watch that show, actually. Tony, that would be a badass show. Oh, no, it's not Vaporware Rev. It, it exists. The, the platform exists. Yeah. Honestly, I think that Foster's home is already pretty close to how the actual show is in a little bit of a way. I love that show. It was way deeper than I thought it was as a kid. Um, here. Here you go, Rev. Here's uh, some of the stuff that they do. But you can, you, if you wanted to get the pa uh, the uh, data package, you can do right now. Um, you can uh, you can contact them. So, yeah, definitely not vaporware. Anarch is already like used within a huge portion of industries that you aren't aware of, like GE uh, industries that you aren't, you have no personal experience like Cisco, GE, Boeing, Lockheed Martin. Um, these, these are all companies that use something like Anarch, right? Like the, usually the only exposure you get to something like Anarch is if you work within big industry, like we, get defense contracts and we have buildings 
on every continent and we fly products to space on a regular basis sort of companies, right? Like that's, that's usually how you get exposed to that one. Um, let's see. Why, hello everyone watching. All right, duly noted. I'll save the tab. Thank you without adjectives. Hawaiian shirts are non-binary culture. All right, I'm I'm for it. I'm for it. I'm down. Uh, do I think Joe Biden's doing well as a president so far? Beggars can't be choosers. When the alternative is Donald Trump, it's all fucking gravy after that. Um, there's some things that I were I was pleasantly surprised. There are other things that were business as usual. Um, you know, approving a $735 million arms deal to Israel basically during the same day that Israel announces they fucking, they're planning on bombing two schools. You know, shit like that. Um, <laughs> that's a difficult one to do. Um. Hey, Lucy. Um, all right, just try and check. Make sure I didn't miss, uh, all right, just want to make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, <clears throat> you had your first day of a new job. Well, I, congratulations, Lucy? Question mark? Are we happy about it? Did you have a good day? Um, is it a productive job? Do you like the job? Are they compensating you uh, appropriately? Um, you know, yeah. All right, cool. Um, who just went live? Oh, Momo. <laughs> Hashtag land back. Oh, Jesus, Momo. Let's see. So is it a harm reduction? Yeah, all right, fair enough. Um, oh, well, of course. I mean, of course. His government that supports Israel. They need a foothold in the region. Of course they do. Of course they do. Um, conflict resolution within anarchism. How is conflict resolved within uh, between large tribes of people that have small disputes or severe disputes where compromise cannot be met? There's easily digestible resource explains uh, that I'll happily do the homework. Manmaker. Um, hang on. Let me just chat. Keep ticking up on me. Um, it depends. Um, it depends, Maker. There could be tribunals or there could be contracts. Um, delegate meetings are also a, a possibility. So it sort of just depends. Also, there could be a full direct democracy vote as to resolution natures. Um, it's, it really ultimately depends on those two tribes, as you so put it, of anarchists as to what they're um, what they're comfortable utilizing for that conflict resolution, especially between the two tribes. Um, generally speaking, what would happen is utilizing direct democracy, there would already be a rotational uh, there would already be a system of rotational delegation. Do not mistake delega uh, delegates for representatives. They don't hold that kind of power. Um, there would be some sort of rotational delegate uh, delegation already that would uh, meet between the two tribes and would discuss and would ha act as a sort of diplomatic uh, within the diplomatic capacity. Um, if they could not resolve beyond that, see, this is the thing. It works a lot of the same way that everything else works. This is just sort of how humanity works, right? You meet, you have a conversation, you try and agree to something. If you agree to something, you put it on pa you put it on paper, and then you ratify that 
with the popular vote. If you can't agree to something, then the delegates come back to the communities and they say, we couldn't reach an agreement. How do we move forward? If this is an escalating conflict, it may get violent. It's uh, If it isn't, then they may utilize something as um, a council members or elders or industry leaders or people who are more familiar with the topic that, uh, than the delegate who was previously sent. And then they would use those levels of expertise to maybe uh, hash out some other resolution. If that resolution cannot be hashed out, then either they go, uh, they go to their own corners and they refuse to work with one another or conflict ensues but this is very similar to the same ways that other systems resolve conflict as well you you essentially use diplomats and so it's a carrot and stick approach at the end of the day it just is underpinned by a direct democracy approval voting consensus decision making depending on who's implementing um methodology of actually okaying it because you don't have somebody like a president or a senator or somebody like that who says, I approve this treaty, right? That treaty has to be approved by the populace. And so that's where your fundamental difference is. You're looking for some like grand difference, like anarchists have like a, a magic wizard who we call upon, who waves his magic wand and resolves things differently. Where at the end of the day, anarchists are human beings who resolve their conflict very much similarly to other groups. The only difference is that the populace is actually involved in that resolution rather than the authoritarian authoritative top down methodology that we have now, where we just get told by our representatives that congratulations, we're selling weapons to Israel. Where in, in an anarchist com, uh, commune or community, if my community were were in uh, were trading with Karina's, and Karina's decided to use the use the uh, industrial tools, weapons, whatever um, that we were supplying them for purposes that we find ethically unsavory, then we could actually have an impact on that matter. As opposed to now, where it's like, well, you know, too bad. We're, we've just approved a $735 million arms deal to Israel. Because how? Because Biden approved it. Hi, if you do that, then I will actually have to summon the Anarchy Wizard. Anarchy Wizards. Spit me Sparky, a magical malarkey. I summon thee the Wizard of Anarchy. You do do uh, uh, you do do those uh, like uh, the the like nerdy wizard voice pretty well. That's that's a is well, it... Kai. I don't think you understand just how many different nerd voices I'm willing to just whip out at a like a moment's notice. It is. Give me your give me your best rogue voice. Rogue voice. Oh oh oh. <clears throat> He stares up at you with doll-like eyes. He's brooding in the corner, thinking about how his parents died again. <laughs> again. The third time. Um, I saw I saw a and a d green text about for the cycle of rogues. Um basically a rogue burned down a village <laughs> and people are like and thus more rogues are born <laughs> uh okay so let's just say there's it starts with an actual like i was here to start and do only good steal from the rich give to the poor but soon i found my cause taken out from under me as my actions had consequences far from it than i ever expected my parents were murdered, and you did it! I've come to stab you! Uh, let's see. Lucy said... Oh, not the type... I, it's all right. Not the type of place I want to build a career in, but I got the type of name recognition that helps you build a career. But it's got the type of name recognition that helps you build a career and definitely what compensated well. I feel not broke, which is new. Well, Lucy... I'm glad it's fulfilling some of your subsistence conditions at the very least. And I hope it, it, it serves as a, a, a rung up for you. For sure. 
Um, let's see, more realistic expectations for Biden. Um, blah, 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 Trump. Biden copy pasta. Uh, oh, no, yeah, this is very much the sort of shit that evangelicals love and support. Uh, hey, I'm definitely not Elon Musk. Sup, bitches? It's me, the Wizard of Anarchism. Um, hey there, not Elon. Would an all-knowing leader be uh, be a just? Oh, would an all-knowing being be a just leader? Um, no, not necessarily, Walada. Just because you know everything doesn't mean you would be just. Doesn't mean you would be benevolent. It just means you would be omnipotent. As to your own motivations, your own desires, your own drives, your own needs, that's a whole other ballgame. So, yeah, omnipotence does not equal benevolence. <laughs> this, reminds, this reminds me of my high school criti critique of English teachers. English teachers creating English teachers ad infinitum. <laughs> Uh, the fucker doors. Um, yeah, knowledge doesn't uh, guarantee intention for sure. Uh, my English teacher did not appreciate that one. A caboose, I don't believe in closing doors. Oh, <laughs> dude, caboose. I mean, all I would say is if I if I did live with you, I I probably would close a door on you, just in, just repeatedly, until you believed in closing doors. <laughs> Fucking. Um, I, I was I just had a I was just giggling to myself because you said something that just somehow put me in a like a thought that I in a memory from like a, two weeks mm. ago when me and Caboose were playing Space Engineers. I was like, okay, Caboose, now I know it's not normal, but I need you to please close the fucking doors behind you in this game. It's really important. And he just stared at me in an atmosphere suit and went, Why is it important to close doors behind you? Fair enough. It's 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 not. Don't worry about it. Just t take take your helmet off, and then just go about your business. Fine. Oh, fine. Uh, without uh, without adjectives. Fuck. And if you think about it, Batman's just privately owned militarized cop. No, hundred percent. Um, and he beats up mentally ill people. Yes, yes, he does. Um, Lucy, you and I could get along with the, the closed door thing, for sure. Cl not closing doors is as bad as not closing cabinets. Oh, my stepfather doesn't close cabinet doors. He doesn't, he doesn't close anything. He doesn't close anything. He just fucking, it, it just walks away from it. He doesn't push in his chair. He doesn't close doors. He, he doesn't close drawers. He doesn't, like, there was always staff to do that for him growing up. He never learned as an, Whoa. yeah, he never learned as an adult. To this very day, I've never seen him push his chair in once. Like, he just doesn't know how to do it. I thought high society was supposed to be the ones with manners. Yeah, those manners are usually uh, handled by somebody else. Uh, Why didn't you open your door? Why didn't you open the door for me? What are you talking about? Jefferson just did. Yeah, it's. I forget. I, he's told me before his his staff's names growing up. Like you know, it was there was the there was a woman who was sort of like the housemaid. Uh, uh, sh there was um, a property caretaker. There was sort of a there was a cook. There was sort of a butler type, um, and there was a driver. I think that's all of them. Uh, does he leave the fridge open? He has. He has in the past. <clears throat> he usually closes it. But old habits die hard. 
um, freezer doors, um, refrigerator doors. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely been an issue for my mom in the past with them. Yeah. Uh, garage doors. <clears throat> the fridge, I would fight him. Oh, feel free. Feel free. Um, oh, for two said, no, 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 Karina. You misunderstood. High society folks are the one with manners, as in a manner, as in Bruce, as in Wayne Manor. Yeah. Um, let's see. It sounds kind of based, not going to lie. Complete disregard for other humans. Yeah, that's what I'll, that's what growing up with wealth will do to you. Breaks your fucking brain. Silence the universal language of consternation. Uh, <laughs> Rev. Uh couple houses ago he um left the garage door open and they had all of their tools stolen like power tools and that sort of stuff yeah yeah they um that house was right near a high school just saying Maker, maker, you, you're putting the cart way before the horse. Don't, don't concern yourself with that. Don't concern yourself with that. The, uh, the, the form and style of anarchism that you could even come to understand and witness in your lifetime is more city-sized. Um, that's, that's the closest you're going to get to it. So don't even worry. I'm, I, Yes, this is condescending, but it's intentionally and comedically done. All right. Um, don't worry your pretty little head over that. It's not happening. It's not happening. It's not happening anytime soon. It's just not. So don't worry about it. You don't even need to understand the delegation and federation aspect of how you run a country within an, uh, within an anarchistic organizational structure. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Um, all you need to know is how to run an organization that way. You need to run, uh, know how to run a town that way. That's all. It's the closest you'll ever touch. So, yeah. Don't, don't bother putting the cart before the horse on that one. Um, if you wanted to play hypotheticals and extend out, basically a couple of things that um, need, need be done. Um, one... We need to embrace the fact that we are already post-scarcity and fix our logistics issues. That's, that's issue number one. Um, that would be one of the, the, the press, most pressing issues for anarchists of the day. Um, they would, uh, we would have to fix the log uh, logistics issues. Um, after you fix the logistics issues, then we can start having that conversation. Um, but human beings aren't ready for that conversation. So don't worry about it. We still have some growing up to do as a species, but that's okay. Anarchism, anarchy, anarchism, and anarchists were here a long time ago, right? We'll be here for a quite some time. When humanity is finally ready, and in the instances when humanity needs us, anarchists and anarchy and anarchism are there. Right? Civil war breaks out. Anarchists will be there to help. Just like we have a history of doing. Korea, Spain, the US, Britain, Italy, France, China, Russia. Like, I mean, this is, we'll be there just fine if somebody needs us. And we'll keep this stuff alive until the rest of humanity is ready to behave like adults. In the meantime, it's okay. We educate where we can educate. We feed where we can feed. We house where we can house. 
and we help where we can help. It's that simple. Um, <laughs> um, did he learn to close the garage door after that? I would like to say yes, for the most part. For the most part, he did. He, for the most part, he learned to close the garage door. But he is old, and his memory is not great. Um, and so there are times where my mom has just found the garage door open. Now that I have moved them into this house... I get notifications if the garage door is open past a certain hour, right? Like if he, if he left my garage door open, I get notified. And so I can close it remotely if necessary. And for anybody wondering, yes, I did build those fucking, uh, some of those backend systems. Um, so there's that. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's a whole fucking thing. Um, he's, his memory is shit. He won't own up to it. You know, fucking dudes. Uh, like, there's, we, we, guys just don't want to admit anything's fucking wrong with them. And he's old and cont uh, cant uh, cantankerous and stubborn and persnickety. And so, no, his, his memory is just fine. He sets something down, he has no idea where it is. He has, he cannot keep track of any dates, any appointments, any sort of thing. He's constantly forgetting pill. Like his, his memory shot. Um, so yeah, at least, at least between my mother and I now and my digital systems for this house, I can at least keep track of some of this stuff. Um, and I've got some tracking tags coming to keep an eye on some other stuff just in case. Oh, geese in the sole of his shoe. Um, you know, yeah, I'm I'm thinking about where I'm gonna hide that sort of shit. Yeah, I'm. We're gonna have to keep track of him. Hey, Elliot. My grandfather too is curmudgeonly. Uh, uh, get you, <laughs> get your cars stolen just buy two new ones. Uh, old geezer is the worst. Um, oh God, I made them secure systems then. Uh, they are open source. They are that sort of, you know, foundational open source technologies and in-house sort of stuff. Um, so I can, you know, use, so I can use Siri and shit like that to command stuff that aren't Apple products, right? Like it doesn't offload it to a server somewhere and you got to sign up for fucking somebody's account. And if their server servers go down, you don't get access to most of my service uh, services are handled in house. Um, so yeah. And for those things that don't hook up, I I've been known to build bespoke apps and web pages to control them. Um, just in case. So uh, shop class got new tools. Um, our fridge has a super annoying sensor. If the fridge stays open one second too long or the drawer doesn't close just right. Ooh, Jesus. Um, yeah, I wouldn't, well, I, I wouldn't I, want, I want those. yeah, I wouldn't want my fridge beeping at me. That, that seems obnoxious. Um, <laughs> fuck, Rev. Um, And preach me, Trey. We're humans that are uh, that at our best. Uh, w uh, that are at our best when we adapt. We don't need doctrine. That's me, Trey's favorite word for what most people would call political ideologies or philosophies or belief systems. B. Trey prefers the word doctrine. Um, and I that's something I can get behind. Doctrine impedes success. It's uncreative and limiting. Um. Yeah, oh, let me see. I, I, we're in already in a post-scarcity society. It's just a matter of actual logistics of it. It's just a matter of fixing it. And I've used the example before. We have literally all of the technology, crop production, everything in this scenario I'm about to lay out is already done. All the work is done. All we have to do is allocate resources a little differently. 
I can put a smart device in the hands of anybody on this planet and they could push a button and a drone could fly over within a reasonable amount of time and deliver food and water to them wherever they may be. This is 100% realistic technology we already possess. It would just require putting a little thing here, a little thing there. You know, it requires a redistribution of the uh, logistics. But that that's not developing anything new. That's not like reinventing the wheel. That's not going to Mars. All that is is a repurposing of already existing systems and technologies with a re, uh, with a uh, more equitable distribution of the uh, the supply chains. That's it. We could put a fucking banana in anybody's hands anywhere on this planet at the push of a button if we so chose. The work's done. We just have to, you know, will ourselves into it a little bit. Which, that is, uh, well, <clears throat> a whole other thing entirely. That, that, ki- that plugs into human beings growing up as a species. We have some growing still to do. Uh, dates are a fruit. That is true, Estrella. Dates are something us anarchists all shall hopefully be getting to more soon. I like, uh, there's a date farm actually out here. You can, you can go visit it. We have a date farm here. Um, let's see. Inject a GPS tracker into him. Um, I love those tags. Brain fog is real. I feel you, Cassidy. Um, Oh, God, somebody told me today there's nanotech in the vaccines. I didn't mean to, but I literally laughed in his face. Now, that's the appropriate response, Rev. Open mockery and laughter is probably the only weapon we have left. Just fucking laugh at him. Um, it was an interesting two-hour car ride with me mostly harping on politics. Fair enough. Uh... Yeah, you're misunderstanding the situation, Manmaker, but I think somebody else got you. Um, I need to level it so everything closes smoothly. I feel you. Hey, Frackle! Fucking Frackle coming in hard. Look at that. Fucking gifting five subs to Patronum, Green Man, Overlord Punk, John Gazebo, and Rider into Storm. And hey there, Frackle, and thank you kindly, my man. Um... Yeah, Freckle. Everyone, kind of just give Freckle a clap or something. Uh, do I have a... Amazing! Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, I think, um... Okay, so Mitre's doing that. And, and hey there, Squee. Um, didn't notice that it was you who... Uh, Procaltech. Uh, technically, if you, want, if you want the technical definition of what I am, if you want the political science terminology, I would be classified as a post-left, post-anarchist. Um, I would be largely uh, mutualist with a dash of communalist with about 15% of sternerist or egoist mixed in for balance. But generally speaking, what you're looking for is post-left, post-anarchist. Um, you've found the most... You did this last cave. You're reusing bits, cave. You are reusing bits. Cave, I just found the most anti-Semitic image I've ever seen. You did this last week on the channel, Cave. Yeah. <laughs> Was it the same picture, too? Yeah, same picture of the fu- red semi with the, the circle slash over it. <laughs> Busted reusing material, Cave, so soon. Uh, you bought a gun today. Squee, what'd you buy? Um... Dude was on about Simulation Fantasy 2. 
I mean, look, I know most of the people who talk about simulation simulation fantasy are really fucking obnoxious, but the truth of the matter is, is it's a prime example of how we don't know shit about shit yet. Um, but hey, if there's a post Malone, is there a pre Malone? Uh, probably. <laughs> Me, Trace, I already hear it. Um, fucking <laughs> goddamn Australians. Um, let's see. Yeah, that's that's never happening in the U.S. for sure. Uh, although there are some interesting new rules um, the ATF is looking to implement, and they're up for comments right now that would redefine what uh, what a what an actual firearm is. Uh, basically, it's targeting the 80% kits. I'm not going to get into any of this stuff unless unless you're a gun nut already and you know the shorthand uh, the, sh uh, the like the shorthand language that I'm about to employ. Just don't don't ask. Like I'm not I'm not going to get into it. But if you do know your firearms, basically the AT ATF is redefining um, uh, redefining what qualifies as a lower in order to attack the 80%. And they're redefining um, from like the lower or the receiver into any uh, any component, uh, any element that can be uh, that can accept mounted components. And so, like a drop-in trigger, even technically, could be uh, a firearm um, under this definition. It would require an FFL to handle it and be um, serialized appropriately. It's a very weird rule set, and if you're familiar with commenting on ATF uh, proposed rule sets, I would suggest you go to their website and comment on this rule set because the inevitable lawsuits that are going to be filed by gun rights activists and gun groups in this country if this rule is actually formalized uh, rely on those uh, comments, uh, uh, those open comment sections uh, as evidence for their cases. Um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of fucked actually. Um, anyway, um, let's see. Oh, so people were, or people were replying. Um, all right, cool. I'm going to keep scrolling down then. Um, I gotta mute while I fill up my Dr. Ho's neck thing. Just a wall through PPQ 9mm. Um, Scree, why'd you, uh, why, what was the impetus for the uh, uh, purchase? Just always wanted a wall through PPQ? Um, is it in, you meant to post this one. Oh my god, who put, oh, Black Hammer. Of course it's Black Hammer. Of course it's fucking Black Hammer. God damn. Damn it, Cave, you've just set me off. Um, I'll get around to that. I'm going to leave it up on my uh, a side monitor, uh, Cave, and it'll annoy the ever-loving fuck out of me, and I'll, I'll fucking, I'll talk about it here in a second. God damn it, Black Hammer. Um, uh, Pro Caltech, it's sort of an in-joke, but basically at the end of the day, don't be a Rick just means don't sit in chat say uh, and argue without content, saying things like, no, wrong, you're wrong. You're full of shit. Like, you actually have to back up what you say. Also, uh, try not to be, like, a Fox News level, like, crypto racist sort of situation. Also, don't show up, like, super inebriated and attempting to argue. That's sort of the long and short of don't be a Rick. But it, it is sort of a community in-joke from a previous platform, even. But there you go. Provolone is in post- Oh, Jesus. Um, all right. Fuck the ATF, they ruin all the fun. I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not arguing with that. I like alcohol and tobacco. Well, you know, uh, BATFE, uh, Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives. Basically, a good weekend. Um, <laughs> uh, I like my PPQ at hand also comfortably like a ha for a handgun. I mean, I get that, but I, I, I mean, they're not huge, but I mean, they're not exactly dainty either. Um, my hands fit, like, to this day, my favorite firearm in our entire collection, familially, uh, familially or otherwise, um, is, uh, SIG P226. Um, I've got an extended, uh, mag for it, so I can get the round count up to 16 rounds with it, 15 in the mag, one in the chamber. Um, I, 
yeah, I'm a big fan of uh, the SIG uh, P226 with uh, rubber grips. I don't like their their default uh, hard plastic grips. I like a nice set of like uh, rubber grips on it, but yeah. Um, don't be a squee while a, uh, while a drunk squee. Squee, yeah, you're you're only when you're drunk you get a little belligerent. But yeah, you were being you were being a bit of a rick the first time we met you. Um, but you know, you've dude, you've come a long fucking ways. I mean, mad props to you and Mitre both because Mitre's doing the sober kick as well. Um. And so, you know, yeah, props to that. Um, I've never owned a gun. I got it for the purposes of carrying it daily. Squee, you've never owned a gun. That's interesting, my man. I would have, I would have put you down as like multiple ownership territory fascinating to know though um well yeah and yes lamb back um 150 pound crossbow that'll do the job depending on you know what you got it loaded with um i'm so mixed about american gun rights because it's like in my law like i think you guys need more sh stricter like prefix laws like you know testing and getting lessons but because of that i can't get a gun in my country because I can't pass the uh, specific test if you're a danger to yourself or not. See, and I... I get it. Like, I get it when other, like... If you have a magic wand and you can magic all of the guns off of the planet, feel free to call me and talk to me about this issue. Otherwise... America has more guns than people, and we have a culture of gun ownership, right? Like Your culture is what scares us. Right? So, not having a firearm in some situations is kind of sketchy as shit. So, I mean, you can talk more restrictions, but the fact of the matter is, is here's something most people don't talk about. Because they don't know about this. People who advocate for, like, gun control or gun elimination don't understand the uh, uh, the level of expertise and dedication that exists in this country. Most people have never met a gunsmith. I know many. And a really, really skilled gunsmith can take a block of metal and make you a gun. It's just the way it works. These are not magic devices that fell out of the fucking sky into our lap. People make them. And you can make them by hand. You don't need industrial manufacturing methods to, ma uh, to make guns. And you can make really high-end guns. Like, it's not even like a zip gun. Like, ooh, in my garage I made a little fucking zip gun with a pipe. Like, no, you can make fully functioning 1911 replicas, all that sort of thing. So if you started, like, gun collections tomorrow, you can't even get rid of the guns. Like, there's just no way to do it. And because of our culture of gun ownership, the people who own the most guns, they're not giving their guns up. Like, you could... We do buybacks. We've tried that sort of shit. That worked in Australia. That doesn't work here. We tried it. We've tried it multiple times. We try it in cities. We try it. We've tried it. It doesn't work. So if you've got a solution to this that involves, if you've got a solution to this that doesn't involve, you know, disarming solid, honorable people who are just trying to defend themselves from a crazy fucking world, then come talk to me. Otherwise, the fact of the matter is, is that we got more guns than people and we're not giving them up anytime soon. And even if you tried to take them from us, we can replace them. And taking them is not going to go well in some parts of this country. I got to tell you, there's a lot of places in this country that, that if you tried to confiscate guns, you better show up with the fucking National Guard. That's all I'm saying. You're going to need tanks. You're going to need drones. Because if you send the local like deputies and shit out to do that, 
it's going to be a goddamn bloodbath. It's just not going to work. So... Honestly, you would need to even satellite before to see how much dirt had been turned over the last month. Yeah. People, like, the first thing I hear out of them, it's like, well, I'm burying my guns then if mm-hmm. they come for them. Uh, actually, I was out boating the other day at Lake Mead, and I lost my guns. So it was a shame. I was really careless. Um, but, yeah, I they went overboard. Um, I don't know where they are. Sorry. That's it. It's that simple. And that's it's a joke amongst gun owners that, oh, I lost them in the ocean. Sorry. Yeah, Cassie, taking guns where I live would go fucking badly. Yeah, taking guns possibly could equal a second civil war. Yeah, it's it's just not something that would work in this country. I used that line for a phone warranty once. <laughs> nice. Uh, Bo said gun collections would take at least 100 years. Extremely low balling. Yeah, it, it's not. It's not a thing that would work well. Yeah, no gun control until the cops are disarmed first. Agreed. Um, I definitely agree with that. Caboose, there's comprehensive gun milling tutorials on YouTube. Making an effective gun is ridiculously easy. I have watched Filipino uh, master gunsmiths take uh, sections of crude uh, steel from uh, battleships that have been rendered useless and are being broken down in their dockyards in the Philippines and just take raw fucking steel. Here is a Colt 1911 replica. It is... It's... They're artisans. Right? Like, this is handcrafted artisanal work. Yeah, they're making a gun. But these people exist, and we have a lot of them in this country. I mean, more than most people would suspect. Um, Let's see. I was low-key trying to troll a topic, but I didn't think you were a gun person. Squee! Fucking Squee. I have more... Squee, if you want to know how to tactically use that firearm, come talk to me. I've taught CCW and tactical classes before. (laughs) So, yeah. Not only am I not not a gun person, but my family is heavily steeped in the gun culture of this country. I, I grew up teaching gun safety classes i yeah yeah this if you go far enough uh far enough left squee you get your guns back (laughs) that's the way it works um oh god there's hipster gun makers brewing pistols in their basement aren't there um there are artisanal gun makers there actually are uh, I live in a rural south, and I don't know anyone who wants mentally unstable people to have guns, for example. Yeah, exactly. Some tools come in handy. Yes, they do. Trip to Home Depot and some basic Google searching. You're going to get a gun with basic functionality. Not a professional grade one, but it would get the job done. You are correct, Frackle. Um, let's see. All right. So I think that that was... Yeah, okay. So there we go. Um, and we're moving towards 3D printed ones. Yes, yes. Some of the carbon carbon fiber, uh, like embedded uh, or imbued, um, um, like composite materials and stuff like that. And some of the the plastics that are imbued with carbon fiber and steel, in some cases now, are getting some really interesting strength tests done. Um, to the point where you can get maybe three or four rounds shot out of a 3D printed gun. It's getting to the point where we really may actually have a reusable 3D printed gun in the next decade or so, depending on material science and 3D printing technology. Yeah. Um, Lost it in a boating accident. Exactly, Duffy. Uh, Fun fact, bladed implements are not considered weapons in Arkansas unless you specifically imply that you're going to use it as such. Technically, I could walk around with a fucking broadsword legally. I know Arizona is the same way, too. Um, (laughs) Normal usage, exactly. Um, That's a hell of a... Sean, UAES... Uh, there's a exclamation anarchism command. Um, but if you have, uh, more questions, feel free to ask him past that. Um, 
I saw a video of a I saw a YouTube video of a dude milling a fucking AR-15 out of a block of cast aluminum. It was super fascinating. Oh yeah, watching gunsmiths do their like participate in their craft. It's like watching a blacksmith. Right? Like it's it's amazing to watch somebody who can create something out of raw materials. Like, you know, like here's a fucking deer. Now I have meal prep done for the rest of the year. I have a knife handle made out of the antlers. I've got, you know, a jacket made out of the hide. Like, people who can make stuff, watching them do that is one of the most beautiful and relaxing processes for most human beings. It's like, dude started with a block of aluminum and ended up with a gun. <laughs> right? Like, that's, that's amazing. Uh... My dad teaches CCW classes in California. Oof, Jesus. Those are not fun ones. Uh, we did uh, Arizona and Nevada, Cassidy. Uh, let's see. Oh, geez. We got the fucking cop shit going off now. Uh, yeah. Uh... Let's see, uh, plenty of gunners around here are irresponsible phones. So many stories of people have accidental discharges or piss poor organization doing a push uh push for a beer for deer. Oh jeez, pushing a bush for a deer. Jesus Christ. Um where are you again, Duffy? I forget where you are. You're somewhere east coast. Um Okay, we're doing. Uh, whether no, well, I mean, an individual. <sighs> a lo a larger buck. For one person, could definitely get you several several months worth of food depending how you portioned it out um it's possible to probably get eight to ten months depending on the deer depending on the person depending on the caloric requirements depending on uh, how good you are at processing the deer there's a number of variables yes the statement was mildly hyperbolic um, Ontario, Canada. That's it. Um, oh, God. They're doing the cop thing. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, there's always one in chat. Uh, hey, Ryder in the Storm. Um, Ryder. If you disarm the proletariat, there's no way to... Like, look, how am I supposed to do stuff? How am I supposed to hunt? How am I supposed to defend myself without the the system to protect me, right? If you're going to do away with the police, if you're going to do away with, uh, with the industrial food practices, if you're going to do away with all that sort of stuff, firearms become a necessary tool for somebody in that space. So, yeah, I don't know many anarchists, like, who don't advocate for gun ownership on some level in North America. Um, Europe's different. Y'all don't have, you guys don't have predators to speak of. You don't have, I mean, when's the last time in Spain you had to face down a fucking bear or a moose, which by the way is the most deadly creature on our continent is the moose. And if you've never stood, they will fuck up you. They will fuck your house up. They will fuck your car up. If so you to let anyone know in Canada, there is a legal distinction for when you have a collision with a moose. It's a collision. You don't hit a moose. Legally defined in Canada, when you collide with a moose, it is as if you have now hit a foreign object. Because more often than not, the moose is fine and your vehicle is total. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you've never, if you've never seen it here, fucking, if you've never stood near a moose, um, let me get you. Let me get you. Get a, ready for a real life Dark Souls boss to here, folks. Um. Yeah. Here. 
Here it is next to an average size sedan. Okay, this moose will fuck your world up. Hippos will ruin your life. Yeah, for sure. Hippos are fucking <laughs> you, dangerous. Europe though. does have predators, the royal families, but you can't treat them like bears. That's illegal. Um, Mitre, shark attacks are also very rare. Uh, moose encounters and bear encounters um, are actually fairly common in our, on our continent. Far I more. I have encountered a bear in my real, like in person, within a ten feet radius of me, at least already four times in my life. Yeah, and like, if you live, simply. depending on where you live, if you live in like northern Maine, you see him um, uh, weekly at least. And mm -hmm. yeah, it, it's just we live in a different part of the we world. Named the bastards. Yeah. Yeah, sharks aren't really a, a factor. And uh, maybe, and, you know, the sharks aren't really the concern, maybe if Steve Irwin had a, uh, <clears throat> a harpoon with him when the uh, stingray came after him, he'd be alive today. He didn't, no, he didn't, the stingray didn't come after him. He stepped on it, and it ended up no. hitting his vascular system in his ankle. You're, you're ruining the... Oh. Don't like it. Don't let facts. I'm sorry, he's my childhood don't, hero. Don't let facts get in the way of a good story. Um, okay. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, fucking! That was a paragraph. Uh, Lin Wu, how are you not already falling? Either way, thank you for following. Hey there, Lin. Um, my dad had a bear raid his tent once when he was living in the woods. Dude, they will. They'll get aggressive. They're like they'll get curious. That's the thing with bears is they they have an amount of mass and a, an innate curiosity that is difficult to contend with. Like if they just want to come through your door, they can just come through your door, whether it's locked or not. It's not really an issue for them. And so that's why people put out spike strips and shit. When, you know, they have board up the cabin, they put nails through boards and put the boards all around the doors and entry areas so the, the bears don't fuck with them. And even still, sometimes they do fuck with them. Um, That's why we have an air horn at every door frame so that in case it's coming near, you just and scare the fucker off. Hopefully. 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 Yeah. If it's brown, sorry, your day's done. It, it just... Yeah, we have predators. Like, you have shit that will kill you in Australia. Aust the, salt cr the saltwater crocodile is the only fair comparison for your part of the world. That's a fucking predator. Um, Coyotes nearly ate my dogs. They did eat my cat um, and tried to eat me and my dad. Let's see. Mountain lions are fucking notorious from cam at least yeah but like yeah we got that we got shit that you see in movies that people lost in like las vegas are running from like yeah they're trying to make it out like that's the deep deserts of the sahara no those animals are just in las vegas as well like again maker for somebody attempting to learn the fundamentals of anarchism, you're running before you're walking. Don't don't try and wrap your head around these topics. I'm doing you a favor here. I really am. I'm not dodging your questions. We talk about the, the delegation scope and scale issues. We have talked about them in the past. We'll probably end up talking about them in the future. I'm literally trying to help you here. You don't understand the fundamentals yet, and you're attempting to like race against Usain Bolt when you're still learning to walk it's it's not something that you're ready for um and frankly neither is a good portion of humanity um yeah i mean that's the truth of the matter is a good portion of humanity isn't ready for that level of cooperation yet you probably are innately competitive um you probably have trouble wrapping your head around a higher uh, a non-hierarchical power structure to start with how does a manager manage a business if the manager isn't technically in charge of the business, right? Like, if he doesn't have the authority to fire someone, how does a manager manage a, a coffee shop? 
right? Like these are the questions you should be asking. Doing things like country-sized scope and scale issues are just going to be too complicated for you at this stage. You need to wrap your head around how an, uh, an anarchistically run coffee shop is run first. When you do that, then you can move up to the next step. And so I don't advocate for a larger country to be uh, to be run anarchistically yet. That's putting the cart ahead of the horse, right? Like we're not ready for that yet. People need to, uh, and anarchism doesn't work that way, by the way. It works from a ground up, so bottom to top methodology rather than a top down. So concerning yourself with how the country would run anarchistically before concerning yourself with how the local community would run because the local community is actually a, the foundational uh, form of that larger national, uh, national, um, form of anarchism so you're attempting to understand the system without understanding the node yet understand the node work on that um because yeah or you could just type exclamation and sin go read the anarcho syndicalism 101 it will scrape the delegation scope scale uh and federation issues for you and maybe you can you know garner some uh, glean some insight from that do I think we should disarm cops? If I'm memeing, then what I would say is no guns for police, guns for everybody else. Realistically, that isn't a feasible solution as we see it right now. Should we utilize the police differently? Yes. Should a segment of the police probably be disarmed? Yes. Should we use a model somewhat inspired by Britain and say like, hey, not all responding cops need to be armed to the teeth. Yeah, it seems reasonable. Do the cops need to be the first responders in most cases? No, no, they don't. So we need to utilize the police differently moving forward. Um, but Do yes. you need a shotgun or a long gun in every dashboard? Um. That's allowing people with arms to show up to mental health crisis is horrible. Well, it just sort of depends. I mean, there's a guy we talked about last week um, who um, was suicidal and the cops showed up and killed him. I mean, that's like delivery service for suicide, right? So, I mean, I suppose just depends how you uh, contextualize it and how you your, your perspective on the matter. If you think that maybe that person could have just been in the middle of a crisis and a mental health professional could have helped them better than the cops who utilized a more permanent solution to that, then, you know, you probably would disagree with that outlook. But hey, as old Uncle George Carlin used to say, who's got time for solutions, right? Uh... Oof, yeah. Only bandages. Um, yep, that's the, the Coyotes, football hooligans, uh, blah, blah, blah. That's sub, uh, fucking side conversation. Don't care. Um, Oh, exclam exclamation A N S Y N. Eh, fuck it. Here. Fuck. Why am I? There you go, uh, Maker. There you go. Quick essay. Um. Um, so what's going on there with fucking red, blue, green person? You believe in one thing which has no principles. Well, that's interesting. Hey, Karina, you've known me for a bit. Did you know, did you know that I believe in only one thing and that it has no principles apparently? Holy fuck, you know what? No. That seems like a reasonable assessment, right? 
uh, especially from somebody who, let's see, let me just do a pop out quickly. Um, uh, do, 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 do. Out. Yeah. All right, cool. Sorry, I just took off my neck brace. Um, you're adorable. Right. Hey, red, blue, green, whatever the fuck. I'm, I'm done with that. RGB. Um, RBG. Um, we literally spent like an hour talking about gun ownership and how you can't eliminate gun ownership in this nation. Also, I'm a person who's highly trained and experienced in, in gun handling, tactical handling, safety handling, and instructing. Uh, so... Like, literally, I'm, my point is that denying the right to guns is a baseless solution. Congratulations. Like, okay. We don't believe in denying. You know what? No, that, that. Um, oh, Jesus, just a bunch of fucking tags. I love it. Um, oh. oh, a little bit of the tension is going. All right. Oh. <laughs> that's a fucking dude that's an easy setup if anybody wants to fucking uh rz just teed one up for anybody who wants to be a bit smarmy um that's fucking brilliant believing that criminals should be allowed to have guns while the law enforcement shouldn't have any is insane this would make these criminals the new law enforcement as opposed to the old criminals exactly <laughs> Ah, fair enough, Australia. Yes. So instead of the cops breaking into buildings and seizing drugs, different people with guns will break into cops' buildings and seize drugs. We we Good literally just had a SCOTUS ruling, okay, that the police aren't allowed to search homes without warrants because they say, well, it's community caretaking. We're just taking care of the community. This was an issue that had to go all the way to the Supreme Court. The last time I checked, we had a Fourth Amendment. This shouldn't have needed going to the Supreme Court. But there was enough of a police pushback on this issue that they felt they should be able to go into people's houses and search them without warrants in the name of, well, it's, you know, community caretaking. Like, genuinely, I don't think a police officer should allow to, you to enter your home unless they make it clear you're agreeing to something doing so. That's not due process. Like they... And by the way, civil right. asset forfeiture accounts for more uh, more money and resources, uh, more uh, resources taken from the American public than all of the th uh, thieving combined. All of the forms of theft. White collar, fucking blue collar, violence... Uh, surreptitious, outright, all of it. Fraud, house, uh, burglary, home invasions, add it all up. And civil asset forfeiture accounts for more than that. The cops are stealing more from the American public than the American public is stealing from the American public. Cops are literally the largest, that, like, largest petty criminals. Just simply put. Not to mention, I kind of want to add shit that's given to them for free, despite their uh, yeah. actively well-working salaries and shit. And, and as Marcus pointed out, that Supreme Court ruling, while it was unanimous, the trial court and the First Circuit Court both found for the police. What the fuck? Okay. So that, well, had okay, that so not gone to the Supreme Court... The ruling would have actually been, yes, the police have every right to enter your house as they see fit in the name of community caretaking. Okay, so from my understanding, don't you guys have, like, the dumbest lowball requirements to become a judge in your country? Oh, you, yeah, you don't need anything. You yeah, like, you don't even need to go to law school to be no. a judge. No, no, you no, no, no. To, yeah, my stepdad, a my stepdad did not go to law school. He was a judge. But you need it to be a lawyer. Yeah, like, yes. 
I just, oh well, you oh. don't. You actually don't need law school to be a lawyer in uh, three or four states: California, Virginia, Vermont, um, and maybe Washington. Um, there's a few places in this country where you don't need a uh, you don't need a law degree to be a lawyer. You just need to pass the bar. <clears throat> well, passing the bar is a pretty big deal, but I also understand that people have found ways to cheat it. So that kind of makes me feel gross. Ugh. Okay. Yeah, and um, and exactly, Rev, and shoot your dog. They always fucking shoot the dog. Um, actually, on average, there is one a one dog shot every eight hours um, in in the United States by oh, police. By police. Humans. Yes, by police. Um, so yeah. Yes, Wither, you don't need to go to law school. Yeah, you're in one of the states. And Virginia, infamously, is because of this whole, like, it's sort of Thomas Jefferson inspired. It has to do with OG uh, versions of law and being a lawyer and common law. And uh, it's a really fascinating set of, like, legal histories that led to Virginia being one of those states, actually. But, yeah, Virginia is one of those states that you just need to pass the bar. Um. And I, I know, um, hey, cat, uh, we got a bootlicker in chat. Um, Rev, I always make this point because I will, I will die on this hill. I will fucking die on this hill. Yes, policing is half based on slave catching patrols in the first place. The other half that nobody ever fucking mentions is the northern big stick police departments who are wholly owned and purchased by industry and business owners and were there solely to crush labor. Anytime anybody struck, anybody anybody uh, got uppity about, hey, maybe we shouldn't have kids in mines or you know maybe we shouldn't allow the factory to burn down with all of the workers in it. Anytime anybody got uppity about that sort of thing, that's what the northern police forces were used for, was to break labor. So, the origins of modern policing are half oppressive anti-labor practices and half slavery. So, you know. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, okay. So, so the, is this the basis for nearly all policing we'd say in western nations though? all metropolitan po all like metropolitan policing in western nations is derived essentially from the metropolitan police force of london yeah and where were they derived from then they were they, they, they are no no they are sort of a unique creation um, traditionally law enforcement took on different forms than what you see in the metropolitan policing Metropolitan policing is actually distinct, uh, distinct from other forms of policing. Uh, traditionally, what you would see within Western practices is it, we still have them, deputies and sheriffs, which are a whole other segment of the legal practice and a whole other segment of policing. But metropolitan policing took, uh, took on its, its f sort of final form uh, with the Metropolitan Police Force of London. Um, and this is where we get the origin of the term pigs from. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's a whole fucking thing, but basically they inspired Boston and Boston is the first metropolitan police force in North America. And then shortly thereafter, it spread elsewhere. Um, and so you've got this sort of, you've got the, the metropolitan policing and you've got the slave patrol and in America that sort of flows is as I always say, there's an unbroken thread from those origin points to now. I mean, it was never actually reformed. It was never fixed. That was not a thing that happened. People think it that just like got intermixed. Yeah, so people th people think that like somehow the police of today are distinct from those practices of old. They aren't. There was never actually a reformation. There was never a resolution to that uh, that issue. It is an unbroken thread from now all the way to the slave patrols, all the way to the Pinkertons, that we never fixed it. Like, it, people just assume we did, and we didn't. Like, it's just not a thing that happened. 
And so you still to this day have codified legal slavery in North America. You still have anti-union practices. You still have union busting. You still have oppression of the proletariat in the working classes. You still have oppression of minorities. You still have all these sorts of things because they were, that is, it's not an, like, it's not like, oh, hey, the, that is the cornerstone. That is a foundational element of our modern policing, right? Like, so you changed a fucking window. You threw a new coat of paint on the walls. The literal foundation you're standing on still exists. You never dug it up. You never fixed it. And so, yeah, of course they still behave that way. Why wouldn't they? That's how they operate. That's their origin. That's why they exist. So there were two. So eventually, the slave uh, catchers were intermixed with the metropolitan, metropolitan style policing to create, I guess, what we would call American policing today. Yeah, you would probably go with like modern metropolitan policing, because it's not necessarily okay. just American. Because some of those practices got exported as well. Oh, trust me, yeah. I'm aware they got exported. Yeah. So, you know, there's a uh, there's a give and a take sort of situation. We 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 borrowed from from Britain and we sort of shared. Um, I mean, infamously, most people are aware that um, the Jim Crow laws were hugely an inspiration for the anti-Jewish laws in Germany. Like Hitler took great inspiration from our uh from our uh our legal structure in America and how we treated black people. It's uh yeah you want to form a slave class of being that could pretend they were free. Uh yeah, yeah, basically. Um Uh yeah, oh, uh Rev, uh it's Sir Robert Peel. Um he, um, yeah, peel, uh, uh, peels pigs. So basically, as the story goes, and this may be slightly apocryphal, there's no really way for us to pin it down at this point, but I've done a fair amount of research in on this one. Um, so basically, Sir Robert Peel engaged in, uh, he, he passed what was known as the Metropolitan Police Act of 1829, which is uh, uh, colloquially known as uh, um, um, Peel's, uh, Peel's Act. And it introduced a series of reforms in policing that would form sort of the foundation for the Metropolitan Police Force of London, right? Sir Robert Peel was Sir Robert Peel, right? This wasn't some rando commoner off the street. He was a lord. Robert Peel, as many do, uh, as many of the wealthy do, had a interest in um, uh, had an interest in having land and having farms and having that sort of thing, right? He uh, particularly was involved in um, breeding, I forget the, I forget its name, um, but he bred pigs and he, he, his farm produced pigs. There, it's a famous breed. I, the name escapes me, um, but it is known to this day. And basically um, in and around this time, it became illegal to uh, uh, take the uh, livestock into the uh, Smithfield Market in the center of London. Right, you couldn't you couldn't run the the the, the animals into it anymore. Um, so basically, what farms and uh, animal husband those that practice animal husbandry would do, you'd have to butcher your animal and bring it in. Right, but fresh commands a better price. Hampshire, Hampshire pigs. Thank you, Cassidy. Um, fresh produces, uh, fresh is, uh, uh, commands a better price, right? Fresher it is, the more expensive it is. So Peel actually used the Bobbies, the police force of metropolitan London to march his live pigs into town to the uh, to the market in defiance of the law and these pigs would overturn stalls and eat people's produce and shit all over the place all the way to the market and as we've come to understand 
in preparation for this, watchers, people on the street, various uh, people walking around would start announcing, here come Peel's pigs. First, they were talking about the animals. But slowly but surely, as uh, discontent grew, that term transferred from the animal to the people who were making it possible for him to conduct this the officers and so peel's pigs quickly became uh synonymous with the police officers of the metropolitan police force of london and that is the maybe slightly apocryphal maybe actually true story of how and why we call cops pigs because the very first metropolitan police force that uh that was ever set up in this world was abused by the person in charge of it to uh, for further uh, to further their capitalist gains. That's literally the first one. So wow, there you go. That was setting everything up from the get go. Yeah, that would explain why tankies like pigs. Uh <laughs> Yeah, I like that story, whether it's fully true, true or not. Uh, Wilhelm, based on a true story. Exactly. Uh, yeah, sounds like cops, like hookers, ladies, better. Um, uh, yeah, no, no, no. Cassie, uh, Cassi, it's Berkshire. It's Berkshire pigs. That that I know. Yeah, it's it's Berkshire. And I can, I can check really quickly, uh, just for shits and giggles. Where is, um, yeah, that's fine. Whatever. Um... There we go. Uh, the The episode, if you want to go looking through the archives, is called um, The Origins of and Problems with Modern Policing or The Origins of and Problems with Policing. Um, but if you want to know what my notes actually say as the working title, the working title for the old episode was actually called America Has the Swine Flu. Um, <laughs> Tamsworth, no. <laughs> Um, uh, Cassidy, according to my notes, they are the Tamsworth pigs named for the town located in Staffordshire where uh, Peel actually based his farm. Um, so yeah, it's the Tamworth, uh, it's the, is the, the pig. So, yep. Um, oh, cat. Yeah, for sure. They are for sure. Especially some of the, the like random rant ones, I'm sure they're they're interesting. Um, if here, if anyone wants to see how how I work when I do a, let's see if this will. Yeah, this. Yeah, you can see. Uh, nope, you can't. It's too fucking shiny. Um, yeah, you can't see that. <laughs> Blown out. Either way, I was gonna show you how I work. But. Uh, yeah, I go through in that episode, like, I go through a bunch of that stuff. Like, I, I st- tell the story of Peel's Pigs, um, and then um, talk about the watch, uh, which, by the way, somebody else was talking about earlier. Good night, Cave. Um, somebody was talking about the watch, like, the uh, the origin. Yeah, 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 it was Duffy. Okay. Um, that's that's That was the original, the informal and communal policing was generally called the watch because it was the night watch. Um, Big Stick was the for-profit, and then there was the slave patrols. Um, and so it looks like Boston created a night watch in 1636. They were the first, of course, to do the metro stuff. Um, yeah, uh, in 1838... Uh, that was the first established. Uh, that was the first American uh, police force established, and then New York, uh, Albany, Chicago, New Orleans, Cincinnati, Philadelphia, Newark, Baltimore, in that order. Um, and then the southern slate, uh, uh, the southern states followed their own policy. And then I will go on to the thirteenth, and a little bit of Lord Acton power. Uh, tends to corrupt absolute uh, power, corrupts absolutely sort of thing. Uh, and then I talk about the rise of the warrior cop, which we've gone into at length as well, talking about fucking Dave, uh, fucking Grossman. That's that's a whole thing as well. But yeah. Um, 
Yeah, Cassie. Yeah, it's the Tamworth, apparently. According to my old notes, at least. Um, the Watch was a funny movie. Night Watch was a funny book, says Rev. So, yeah, that's that's sort of... Um, oh, Jesus Christ. Uh... Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I just, I just saw your whispers, Cave. Sorry, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Cave. Uh, RV. I just saw your whispers. If there is something that like needs mod attention like that, RV, um, best to throw it to me on Discord rather than over Twitch. I know it's a little of an inconvenience to like open a new app and that sort of thing, but I'll see the Discord notification on my top screen. Uh, whereas the um, <laughs> I just saw your uh, your uh, meme image, Karina. Um, whereas uh, I wouldn't necessarily see the the Twitch whisper. Um, all right, there's that. Oh, it's been a while since I had to do the uh, the history of policing fucking spiel. Um. Yeah. Well, isn't it better than just repeating how often uh, Mark's got his ass kicked by anarchists? Oh, well. Um, you know, fucking <laughs> whiny little bitch that he was. Um, yeah. That's one of, uh, one of those old episodes. Um, let's see. Now, yeah, let me scroll back. See if I... Uh, uh, oh, in Germany, we say Bullenschwein, um, bull pigs. Got to emphasize that. Um, let's see. All right, scroll back a little bit. Um, I'll take Jim Crow, never really stopped to change forms. No, 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 Frackle, that's, uh, I'm just scrolling back a ways. Uh, Frackle, no, that's what I mean by there's an unbroken thread. Like Jim Crow was, Jim Crow didn't start nor stop. Right. Jim Crow was an extension of a policy that was already in place. And it was a means of like rebranding and shifting and changing and making it, you know, okay, so we can keep doing this, but we're going to have to do it this way sort of situation. It was surreptitious. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's just sort of, it's a stop on the railway as it were. Um, but yeah. Let's go over how much Mark's got his ass kicked by anarchists. Well, I mean, we kind of touched on this um, last night, actually. Karina Caboose and I watched Poly Matters uh, China series. Um, China sort of has played it out for us. Between Russia and China, we, we really did. Like, we ran the experiment a couple of times on a grand scale. And basically, Marxism ends up in super capitalism. I, that's just sort of how it works. Is it just happened both times. It ends up in super capitalism. <laughs> uh, at least it's Leninist strains do. I, you know, yeah. For sure. That, like, ML version of it ends up in, like, ultra-mega capitalism. Uh, I'm getting a little twisted. What can you do? Uh, yeah, it, it, and by the way, if uh, y'all haven't seen uh, Poly Matters um, videos on China... Go watch them. Um, I'll link you in chat the first of the series. Uh, it goes up to part four. But it's worth watching because... They're very easy to binge. I will say that. Yeah. And it, it contextualizes China for Westerners in a way that we're not familiar. China's fucked. China's fucked, folks. China's fucked. There's a bunch of factors. We're not going to get into it. We're going to do the whole fucking thing. 
go watch the videos. Poly Matters does a great breakdown with infographics and shit like that. Fucking from numbers derived from the Chinese government themselves. Right? Like, that's it's just, you know, like, oh, this is chauvinist Western propaganda. Like, these numbers are coming from China in most instances when he's talking. Rev proper funds. And we, and we can only assume that they're probably highballing things to look better. Yeah. Like. Yeah, they've got a number of factors working against them. Go watch the series. It is really enlightening how much China is up against it right now. Um, the the next 40 years are going to be kind of really interesting to watch, frankly. Uh, yeah. If anyone knows, if anyone knows how, like, stalemate uh like kind of like stunted japan is culturally right now because of certain <laughs> marriage issues yeah that's going to hit even worse soon in china just just watch the video um here's what you here just just a tidbit imagine 35 million angry violent incels they're creating 35 million incels. There are 35 million men in China who will never have a shot at a uh, at a female partner. That's going to look interesting. As just one element of a clusterfuck of factors that most of us don't get exposure to on a regular basis uh demographics water pollution uh fucking real estate national security like poly matters goes through them and there's a number of factors that are just sort of not really arguable like this is just the way it is this is just the way shit works and uh, you know water flows downhill rain is wet the sky, you know, like this is just matter of fact in a lot of these instances. So go watch it. It's really fascinating. Um, why do you think they're taking Africa? Yeah, no, they're they they need the resources, but it doesn't watch the series. Watch the series. It, it really is. Yeah, they're They have to make moves that they're not capable of making culturally. That's the truth of the matter. They can't make the moves they need to make. Um, yeah. Like I said, really fascinating series. Why should a partner be female anyway? That is fair. Um, but given a paternalistic, um, uh, given a hyper uh, a, a hyper masculine paternalistic culture, they tend to look down upon homosexuality. So, you know, they're going to quickly embrace it or lynch a lot of their own people. Yeah. So just go 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 watch the Poly Matter series on China. It's really enlightening, and China is not doing as well as. Well, tankies would love you to believe. Let's just put it that way. And they're not doing as well as China would have you believe. Their exports aren't even covering as much as you probably think. Wither, um, America doesn't need to make those moves. That's the really fascinating part. America successfully did the transition that China has just flubbed. It's, yeah, we don't need to make those same moves. We made them already. Um, yeah, so the answer technically would be yes, Wither. Uh, America can make those moves. America did make those moves decades ago. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, China is a transitionary state, and they didn't make the transition successfully. Their, their consumer base, their economy, their investment profile, it's not where it needs to be. And yeah, go go watch the Poly Matters videos. He'll break it down for you pretty effectively. But it is really enlightening and easy to understand. They fucked up. Um, that's why Chinese men, a lot of Chinese men are looking outside of China for partners. Yeah, I can imagine so. They have no other choice. And uh, I don't think a lot of cultures on Earth 
have done a matriarchy where they lynched and purposely, ex you know, stopped men from being born to balance this out. Yeah. <clears throat> the preference for male babies comes into play in this. Cultural, cultural normative values comes into play to this discussion as well. It's a whole thing. Um, would you argue that the USA is regressing in that regard too in terms of developmental transition? No. In fact, um, our consumerist-based economy is the next stage that China didn't actually successfully transition to. It, there is a point where you outgrow manufacturing. Um and our economy successfully did that. Now, are we uh, regressing? No, we're looking to shift the manufacturing sector for the globalist se uh, section of our economy into other places. We already see it. Go to go to fucking Walmart. You see Bangladesh, Vietnam, Laos more than you see China these days. And India is stepping up to the plate right now. It looks like India is going to be the new manufacturing powerhouse. Fast forward a couple of decades. So... Yeah, the U.S. doesn't need to regress in that regard, and it doesn't seem like we're going to anytime soon. We make the things that you would want to make yourselves. Otherwise, the rest just isn't cost. It's cost prohibitive to manufacture a lot of stuff for yourself. And so, yeah, we transition to a consumerist economy, which indicates uh, it, like a number of things. But fundamentally, it indicates uh, a uh, confidence in your uh, your uh, your national economy that you're willing to spend that amount of money. Chinese consumers don't consume, by and large. Their number one expenditure is houses, and the majority of them buy second and third houses. The uh, One of the graphs in the series is hilariously enlightening. The, what was it, 81%, I believe, Karina? It was eight, Sorry for which exact statistic? Uh, the uh, second home percentage. It was 81%, right? Oh, Okay, so no, uh, it was 70%. 70%. Was a, yeah. You know, it was a 70% total of all homes bought that year were a second home. Okay, they, the homes just and sit empty. 20% were a third. Okay. They don't invest in other stuff. They invest, they invest in real estate, and their real estate market's a whole other fucking ball game. Go watch that. Um international home buying as well has suddenly quickly crept up as their other investment however that's just going to leave a power vacuum when their economy crashes it, and uh, yeah and Housing vacuum. yeah and wither that is true yeah we're cl we're closer to automated communism than china it is actually true well, of course you are yeah america's uh, closer to it than canada is Y'all don't actually know what certain things you have going on. Like, you have some of the, I would say, most clear-cut business restrictions. And, honestly, your government does Swede! a decent job at being... Fucking Swede could speak on this with authority. But, yeah, Swede said U.S.-based manufacturing has shifted to bleeding-edge tech, uh, tech only. Right? It, it's not... It, it's just cost-prohibitive for us to do it. It's not worth our, uh, worth our time. It literally isn't worth our time. As a nation of peoples... It's not worth our time to bother with any of that. It's the truth of the matter. Unless it's the next, next generation shit, it's just not profitable for us. So we don't engage in it. We have too many labor rights to be competitive. That is true. And that's part of the cycle. That's part of the like industrialization cycle is that lack of human rights... Um, and labor uh, regulations leads to, you know, you have a glut of population, you throw all of the human suffering at the manufacturing sector, and you build some stuff. It's part of the process. And we grew out of that. Uh, we grew out of that part of our, uh, our economic history. We moved past it. So, yeah. I remember a throwaway line from DS9. Star Trek that explained one of the big turning points for human history was when they could make a replicator that created other replicators. Yep, you're done. You're done. Like that's that's the end of scarcity as you know it. Now you just need an energy source. Exactly. Yeah. If every manufacturing could be done with one device and a larger version of this device can create smaller ones. 
then you're you're finished. And we're the only already thing you develop is bigger ones. And we're already um, heading that direction with 3D printing and you know those sorts of things. Like we're we're headed that way. Replicators are a ways out. Don't get me wrong, but we are headed in that direction. Um, Swede, the um, the uh, production possibilities curve, the PPC, the production possibilities curve, tells us that efficiency demands U.S. Man, uh, uh, demands us shift manufacturing to other countries for non-essential items. Why produce consumer discretionary here? Uh, um, yes. Uh, my dad keeps saying stuff like, how can we afford to live without the manufacturing jobs? And I keep having to tell him, don't ask me. I'm opposed to capitalism. <laughs> um, whether Af China doesn't have uh, an Af a, a, cho a resource chokehold on Africa necessarily, but Europe, China, and, Af uh, and the U.S. are all jockeying for position in China to one degree or another. Everybody knows there is so much there there's so much land so many natural resources that africa is rich africa is sincerely insanely rich and so yeah they, they are um they're jockeying for position as it were i just had a funny thought of super big south korea it's like, oh, China collapses. South Korea just goes through north and starts taking land. Hello. I, 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 I don't, I don't know. Maker, okay, first, Maker, you have to understand. One, I'm not going to watch a 24-minute video while I'm on air like this. Um, but two, I, I advocate for anarcho-syndicalism because I think it's a, a reasonable step. Right, we can head in that direction. Anarchistically organized syndicalists, uh, which is just fucking French for trade union, right? Okay, so anarchistically organized unions are a great way to reclaim the lost labor power in this nation. I, I firmly believe that, and I advocate, it for, I advocate for it as a step. But here's the truth of the matter. To get where I want to go, you have to change trains at multiple train stations. There's no direct route from here to there. So I need to get you on the train, and I need to get you off... At the next, uh, at the next uh, train station, right? Anarcho syndicalism is that next train station. I'm fine advocating for it. That is not my personal philosophy. I'm not a syndicalist. I just merely see it as a tool that I think would be acceptable to the majority of the populace, and that is an achievable goal somewhere in my lifetime. So, would it, uh, would it be, uh, you know, would it a good snapshot representation of my ideology? No, not at all. Is it something that I actively advocate for? Yes, because at the end of the day, I am a pragmatist. I want to make progress, and progress is a game of inches, not a game of miles. And so I want that inch. Anarcho-syndicalism is that inch. Um, oh, conf oh, Jesus, sweet. Confessions of an Economic Hitman. If you want to understand uh, Africa over the next 50 years, that book will tell you how, uh, how it'll work. So uh, long and short of confessions of an economic hitman. Um, basically, we go in, we bribe somebody. If they refuse the, uh, refuse the bribe, we install somebody else. If we can't successfully install somebody else, we send the Marines. There's sort of the, the uh, compressed version of Tales of an Economic Hitman. <laughs> train rights. Um, let's see. Trade unions, national Choo -choo. Aid, dual power systems locally is what I'm thinking now. Yeah, whether that's dual power systems locally should be a goal for any anarchist. Like, right, you should be setting up free clinics and like food co ops and community gardens and whatever else, right? Whole bunch of mutual aid and mutualism at the local level. That should be goal number one. Uh, well, goal number one for anarchists, you've heard me say it before, 50% of what an anarchist should be doing is education. 100%. Outreach and education. 50% of your day should be spent doing outreach and education. 
People need to be taught these tools exist, that these are options, that they can engage in them, that sort of thing, right? 50% is education, then the other 50% is actually getting some shit done. Or let's call it 49, because you have to take 1% off. That's electoralism day. You know, go vote. Who gives a shit about the fucking federal shit on, on the average, right? But your local mayor matters. Your local, like, chief of police or sheriff matters. Your local city council members matter. Right. Like this is you fucking you can argue that, you know, there's no ethical participation in electoralism, blah, 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 blah. If you want to get lost in the moralism that some anarchists get lost in, fine. But go read Sterner and cure yourself of that shit. Um, but at the end of the day, these are the people that can fuck your world up. So handle that shit. Um, but, yeah, you should be constructing dual power systems the whole way through. Um, not smash capitalism, man maker. Again, I'm not, I'm not an insurrectionist. I'm not a revolutionary. I'm very reasonable. Um, at least I'd like to think I am right. It's not about smashing capitalism. It's about the next evolutionary step, right? When feudalism was transitioning to constitutional monarchism, it wasn't about smashing feudalism. It was about Feudalism has done what it can do to serve humanity, and now it is counterproductive. So let us move forward. Capitalism has done what it can do for the Western world, and it is starting to cause more problems than good. It is time for the next evolutionary step. It's time to start having that conversation. And that's where I come in. As an anarchist, I'm not saying that this should be I'm not prescriptive I'm not an authoritarian I'm not going to force you into an anarchistically operated commune but if we're having the meeting I want us at the table and I want us to have you know I want us to have a seat at the table so we can engage in the conversation uh kid cat flinches in validation well I mean you know if you've got cat I mean Sterner serves a very real purpose in in philosophy and if you're overly obsessed with moralism then yeah you need to read some sterner <laughs> you need to fix that shit and that's what sterner does just don't make sterner the cornerstone of your philosophy <laughs> sorry cat oh uh, let's see um and as for a nation of anarcho syndicalists look it's again a nation of anarchists is the most hilarious, like, just, it's not, it doesn't work that way. Um, but I think I've fully addressed the fact that this isn't, you know, like, anarcho-syndicalism is a step that we can achieve. So let's take that step. But we need to head in a direction, and capitalism is, it needs evolving, shall we say. Um... Can you vote for yourself on a state level? Yeah, actually, you can. Uh, you are free to vote for yourself in an election. Um, yep, you can vote for yourself on every level. Um, I wonder how many people write their own name in on a presidential ballot. Yeah, oh, yeah, that would be an interesting statistic to get your hands on. Um, and, yeah, Kat, I actually recommended somebody read uh, Ego in its own. Um, 100%. Yeah, where there is... Um, Wither is correct. I was like, all right, because moral relativism came up um, and it was a whole fucking thing. And so I was like, first, you need to read post anarchism. Then you need to read after post anarchism, uh, post uh, after post anarchy, and then go read Sterner because, you, you know, they concern with moral relativism and stuff like that. So, yeah, I actually I prescribed Sterner today, Kat. You, you would have been proud. Um Tried the educational side today. It didn't go well. They accepted the necessity to take care of each other, but lost them at the vote for Republicans to vote for a Christian nationalist. <laughs> eh, well, Rev, you know, horse to water and all of that sort of thing, I suppose. Um. <laughs> radio. Oh, smashing has to be consensual. Yeah, solid radio. Uh, you're quite welcome, Maker. I Look, anybody who... In, Anybody who puts forward the effort, anybody who puts forward a good faith effort to even understand some of these concepts, in my opinion, is, you know, great people. So, like, mad respect on putting in the work. Um, yeah. So, nothing but love, my man. 
Teamsters are legit, or they used to be. I don't know what they're like now, says Australia. Yeah, I don't I don't know the current state of the Teamsters, to be perfectly honest. Oh. Oh, yeah, man. Uh, so how is your back feeling now or your neck or whatever <laughs> my neck my back how's your uh how's your shit feeling Karina honestly feel like I am out of place right now it's very mm. it's an idle ache um I haven't had a I haven't had a spasm in the last three hours so that's nice at least you know little wins Um, oh, and Swede, I don't know if you're here, uh, but I actually recommended a video in which people will be familiarized with the, uh, CIGNX, uh, formula. Um, it's not, it doesn't go super into depth, uh, about it, but, uh, yeah, I figured you would, uh, you might find that interesting, Swede, that I'm recommending videos that talk about the, uh, the CIGNX. Um. One on the what? It's the formula for uh, calculating a GDP. Oh. Yeah. Uh, hey there, Tony. Uh, if I had to compile a list of short-term achievable goals to achieve more socialism. Oh, Lord. Well, that. See my conversation uh. about China earlier um, and how Marxism ends up in super capitalism. Uh <laughs> Um, what would it uh, would it be on? Um, yeah, it's it's sort of is. Look <laughs> I love that. Uh, aggregate. Uh, so C I G N X equals A D. Um, it's consumer spending, investment, government spending, uh, national exports equals aggregate demand. And sweet, are you proud of me? <laughs> remembered i w i did learn that last night you I did remember that i learned uh they don't he doesn't really go into the aggregate demand side of it but yeah um it is anybody who's any economist is intimately familiar <laughs> any any economist is uh intimately familiar with that um so let's see um what was it? It was uh, achievable goals, short-term achievable goals uh, to achieve more socialism. Um, Re-empower your working class via unions or um, something akin to unions. Um, also, uh, a refocus, uh, a refocusing or, uh, focalization up, uh, focusization upon, uh, th things such as workers co-ops is going to be super productive. Um, also I would say as Wither was mentioning earlier, um, dual power structures, um, are a big factor into that as well. Um, understanding, uh, like the localization of the community, um, oh, you know what would go a long way? Knocking down alienation a little bit. Rebonding as like a community of people. Get to know your fucking neighbors. Right? Like this is a big thing because all of this sort of hinges upon that. Setting up a mutual aid network or a community garden or whatever dual power structure we're going to talk about hinges upon like a, a reduction of alienation and an increase of communal activity. So if you want to engage in these sort of like socialist or communalist or mutualist endeavors, first and foremost is, and I'm sorry, shut-ins, um, introverts and shut-ins, I'm sorry. The first and foremost thing is to get to know your neighbors. It's to get, get to know the people in your community. That's, that's first and foremost. You have to do that. And that every time I do, they move away. Uh, the housing market's too vol volatile here. Um, so yeah, I would, I would go with that. Like this sh short list, um, right. Uh, says law. Um, 
There's probably like, okay, so Swede, I'm probably not going to give you like the thing that you want, but isn't Say's Law the, the b tendency um, that every product produces, every product produced creates a knock on effect of demand for other products? Like, uh, yeah. Every product creates a demand. Uh, every product created creates a, uh, another. De uh, creates increased demand for other products by creating products that are capable of being traded or exchanged for those subsequent products. Right? That's Say's law. Dude, it's been it's been a while, but I'm pretty sure. Like, is there a more formal structure to Say's law? Is there like a something that I'm forgetting? But yeah, that's Say's law, right? There it is. Creation of supply leads to aggregate demand for other products. So I was right. I just, the language wasn't there. <laughs> it just wasn't, the language wasn't formalized, but there it is. Yeah. Creation of supply leads to aggregate demand for other products. I um, create canned soup. Now uh, can openers have gone up in sales. So of the gears for making them and the oil to make them move smoothly. Um... Uh, that's fair. That's fair, Cruz. Uh, Tony. Um, says law, says who. Ah, uh, fucking Wither. There you go, Wither. Uh, can I just anonymously drop vegetables on their porches? Uh, some sense. I mean, you could. In today's day and age, though, people might be suspicious of that. I don't... It just depends on where you live, but yeah. If they're Karen... They will say you tried to poison them or you hid like razor blades in there. So be careful. Estrella? I fucking hate you. <laughs> I fucking hate Some you. Some human beings are the examples of like slap suits oh. anthropomorphized. Yeah, that is true. Um, Estrella said, uh, okay, but does it count if I travel across the country to meet with a bunch of people, uh, out, uh, uh, of other people nowhere near me so I can yell point of privilege at them? That counts as community bonding, right? Uh, totally. Totally. Point of privilege, I don't agree. Rev, but my neighbors still have their Trump, uh, Trump flags up. That's easy. That's easy. I'm not kidding you. I could get your neighbors in on a mutual aid project in one meeting. I'm not kidding. This is not ego. This is not me like doing some big dick energy shit. The fact of the matter is, is that all I need to do is open with. Okay. So the Trump flag tells me everything I need. Gov you can't you can't rely on government and, and big business, right? Like, I mean, look at big tech. They'll turn your backs. They'll turn their backs on you and deplatform you in an instant, right? Government can't be fucking relied upon. God knows this Biden administration. They're probably going to come from your guns anyway. They're going to come for your stuff. They're going to come for your medication, right? You know what? The old day in the old days, we used to take care of each other. Your neighbors would lend you a cup of sugar or a bag of flour if you needed. You know, in the lean times, the, 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 your, your neighbors and your church group would come together. We should do more of that. You know, we should, we, should, we should produce food in this community. That way, big business like Whole Foods, who's some liberal-owned corporation anyway, doesn't have a monopoly on this sort of stuff, right? We should talk to uh, we should talk to Doc Johnson, and we should we should talk about trying to get some affordable health care in here as well. Because big pharma's fucking injecting people with God knows what now. I'm telling you, they're an easy sell. They're an easy sell. Just don't come at them with anarchism and mutualism and solidarity and socialism. Just come at them. It, just you know, come correct. It's no big deal. Season it with a bit of fear mongering to get it across, but that's kind of the language they speak. Yeah, meet people where they they are. Preachy radical. Uh, my grandma made me think sometimes. What do we think about inviting your neighbors if you intend to have a loud party, or at least tell them? Oh, Mitra, that's solid. 
yeah, if you're going to have a loud party, just go to your fucking neighbors, take them a fruit basket and like a bottle of wine and some like earplugs and maybe a CD or like a fucking digital download code or whatever the fuck of their favorite music and just be like, hey, I just want to let you know, look, I don't have parties all the time, but I have something that I really want to celebrate and I've got a bunch of people coming over and we kind of want to get loud and it's kind of going to go late, but I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to be a burden on you. So, you know, I got you a bottle of wine. I got you some good food. I got you some earplugs and I, I hope you can understand this won't be a regular thing. I just want, you know, I just want to blow it out tonight. And you're more than welcome to come over if you'd like. Are you kidding yeah, you me? You always have to finish with the invite. Yeah. Are you kidding me? They're not calling the cops after that. They're not calling the cops. They're probably also not joining. No. Um, and that's probably the best case scenario. If they take you up on it, hope they're not awkward, and maybe you've made some good new friends, though. Says law, uh, says law is the uh, evidence behind supply side econ. Thank you, sweet, for that further clarification. Uh, draw Skyrim thieves guild symbols everywhere, all of the damn place. And that's whether that's culture. Um, this is an easy steal, brother. Uh, whether I've told you this before. The left needs to get more comfortable with a little more Machiavellianism. And what I demonstrated for that hypothetical of interacting with somebody who has, still has a fl uh, Trump flag out front and in getting them to engage in mutual aid um, is that I demonstrated becoming comfortable with a little bit of Machiavellianism. There was manipulation. There was lying. There was, you know, there was all sorts of tactics being used in that in that rhetoric, but I didn't cross any lines. It's a little ethically dubious, but nobody's harmed out of it. And the end cause is a good cause. So I'm OK with it. Be comfortable lying, be comfortable manipulating as long as you're not actively harming somebody and the end result is a good result. Welcome to human beings, motherfuckers. Sometimes we need a push. Um, Estrella said, no, for real. I live in a super red state area and we have mutual aid network that refuses to mention any leftist terms. They write everything, uh, they write everything to where it's palatable for conservatives, like community self-reliance and not trusting politicians, etc. And it works. There you go. Australia is actually, it, it, it's, it's simple. It's simple. Brexit. Yeah. It really isn't that complicated. It's more complicated to get leftists involved in solidarity and mutual aid work than it is a right winger. How's that for a take? It's easier. Have you seen these prepper movements? Have you seen these militias? Have you seen this shit they do? It's super. They're actually almost all. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, no, no, go ahead. I was going to say, they're almost always looking for a cause to get behind. They need community. Like, it's their foundations. Traditions almost always rely on the fact that you have a strong community around you. And if, like many, during quarantine, they felt like any and all communities they had were shattered, when it opens up again, it's the perfect time for you to talk to your neighbors, who probably are shut-ins right now, and be like, hey... I don't fucking trust any of them either. Let's uh, let's just start being a little more self reliant. What do you think? Exactly. You can... Yeah, and and yeah, as Puka put it, you just need to know your audience. That kind of thing. Exactly. Um, pri uh, call it a private mutual aid network. Do, 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 don't even call it mutual aid act. Don't don't XL. Just don't call it mutual aid. That's that's leftist terminology. Just call it like a resilience network or something like that. That'll get you to it. Never never drop healthcare. Like, honestly, actually, I would say if you can, say, like, uh, personal red remedies or, like, medical kits. Like, you just tell them, like, hey, let's just make sure we have the supplies around here and advocating for that. And you don't need to actually mention that you're pushing for medical care. And then later on, tell them, it's like, you know what would really make it easier for everyone to have it? You just start convincing them that Medicare is easier than getting everyone a med kit. But get them on the med kit first. 
Uh, berserk. Given that we have members of com- of, a, of the community that have actually interviewed the Boo Boo Boys uh, and engaged with the movement, and we've actually done um, some uh, author- anti-authoritarian interactions with them, they are really a thing. So, yeah. They're not huge, but they are a thing. Um... Insert state or town's name, Independent Resource Network, says Kat. Yeah, exactly. That's There you go. The, the, the Lovelock Independent Resource Network. It's a fucking bumfuck town in northern Nevada. I just pulled out of, I pulled out of my ass. Um, you know, the, the Paducah, Kentucky Independent Resource Network. Kidding me? That shit would sell. That shit would sell. <clears throat> Private charity for Jesus Network. <laughs> uh, Patriot Fund Freedom Kits. Oh, Freedom Kits will go a long way, casual. Yeah, that one would work. That one would pay dividends. I, I, you know, all right. So I think it was cave that sent this to me. Everybody, are you prepared to be angry? Um, so this was posted by black hammer. Oh, and land back, just land back. Um, land back. that's, that's L A N B A Q by the way, land back. Australia. Oh, just a Nazi arc now. Yes. Facts, I sure hope so. I sure hope so. That or a grift. Grift or a psyop would be fucking great. Yep. Yep. Casual OG version. <laughs> Straight up, mom, could you pick me up, please? I hate it here. Yeah. Yeah, Black Hammer is just going full mask off anti Semitic Nazi arc on this shit. Yeah. So that's a thing that we have to be like mildly concerned about apparently. I would have thought Palestinians were too white for these people. <laughs> uh Marcus, I look away for two fucking minutes and get a drink and come back to that. Um, oh, radio. Oh, man. I, radio, here is the speed run of what Black Hammer is. Okay, Black Hammer could be a grift, it could be a psyop, or it could be this. They are a black nationalist, uh, black Hebrew Israelite uh, group that unironically does like Joker, we live in a society full face makeup videos. Uh, they say land back um, like as a, a verbal tick as punctuation, co-opting an indigenous land back movement. They also use terms like chief, um, which is super fucking great. Um, they are anti-Semitic, they are transphobic, they are homophobic, they are uh, racist towards basically everybody who's like not sub-Saharan African looking at this point. If you are even strenuously beige, you're probably off the fucking team. They are, uh, they have the makings of a sex cult. They could easily end up in like a Jonestown sort of Waco situation. Um, they, yeah. So this is sort of a lot of the stuff involving Black Hammer. Um, theater kid gone wrong now wants money and or cult, says Estrella. Yeah, it's, it's, they're super cringe. 
Um, they gained notoriety by uh, basically co they called Anne Frank a colonizer who deserved to die. You know, as you do. If you look like if you look like Cafe LA, you're too white for them. <laughs> yeah, yes, radio and Frank, as in the 15-year-old girl who was sent to the camps who died of typhoid during the genocide that the Germans were running against them. That yes, that Anne Frank. She was a colonizer who deserved to die. Yes, that that Anne Frank. Yes, yes. Same same one radio. Yeah. The the, the diaries. Yes. <sighs> she profited from imperials. Exactly. Yeah, and Cassie, they claim to um and dying of typhoid is a known tactic of colonizers, didn't you know? Um, yes, they claim to be building a town in uh, in Colorado called Hammer City, where only colonized people are welcome. Um, they claim to be building this on land that has been identified as federal land. They're not building anything yet, but they claim to be building, and they claim to have uh, have, per uh, have purchased 200 acres or need money to purchase 200 acres. It's all over the place with them. Either way, there you go. Fucking Black Hammer is a bunch of racist, anti-Semitic assholes who hopefully are just running a grift. Otherwise, they're a government-run psyop or there are sex there a death sex cult waiting to happen. Take your fucking pick. Either way, I really wish they didn't exist. Not as people, but as an organization and as an ideology. Um They've showed a picture of a desert flower as proof the soil is rich. Oh I know, I loved that claim, that fucking rich soil. You're in Chaparral. Like, up on the Continental Divide, for fuck's sake. That isn't rich soil. Like, that's the opposite of what rich soil is. I, I, there, but hey. The third would make for some awesome news stories. Hey, uh, hey, Psycho. It would. Yeah, it certainly would. Nah, I'm, I'm good. I don't need to click that link about fucking Gazi. <laughs> they don't understand it. They don't understand anything. Ah. Uh. Oh, I know. No, 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 man. I'm. I'm not saying you're trying to like send me some fucked up link or something. It's just by the very nature of what that is, I'm not clicking it. <laughs> I, I. I know what it is, but. I've seen too much of these people already. I I don't need more anti-Semitism and more racism and more segregationism and more idiocy. Thinking that Chaparral, like Colorado Chaparral, like is rich soil and it is fertile and that you can just freely plant in it and things will grow. Like, I don't, these people are stupid they're terrible like they're they're like anti-human in a lot of ways they're toxic they're racist I, I don't i got enough of these fucking people in my life like i already like we did the black hammer arc i don't need fucking i just i had to put that up cave brought that to my attention that they're doing like old school nazi propaganda posters of jews now God, I wish they'd go away. Um, it, Maker, I agree. We we had a lot of good laughs uh, at their expense earlier on in the arc, but now it's just sort of, God, I wish they'd go away territory. <laughs> uh, yeah, fair, Duffy. <laughs> Lucy, oh my lord, there's a prehistoric-sized mosquito in my room. 
I want pictures then, Lucy. Uh, it may just be a male mosquito, Lucy. Uh, which, if it is a male mosquito, they don't buy, uh, They don't suck your blood. It's the females that do that. Insert your own jokes here. Um, but yes, that is how that works. Or a crane fly. Yeah, it's like over a half an inch long. It could be a male mosquito then. Uh, the plants they plant will become communist and will grow better. Fuck, Swede. Why didn't I think of Lysenko? Of course. Of course. Oh, God. I swear to God. I'd love to, That's one thing I'd love to cue them off. Like, I'd love to tee, them, uh, tee that up for them and be like, well, what about Lysenko? <laughs> but he was white. So, they may not like him. <laughs> no, my very original joke is thwarted. Um, mosquitoes are sexist. Lysenko will come to them in a dream and show them the way to salvation. Trust me, bro. Uh, it, it, it's the, the balancing facts, right? Like, the male seahorse carries the baby to full term, so, you know. Nature balances. Um, yeah, well, a lot of this, the small ones are females and they suck your blood. The larger ones are males and they do not. So if you see like a big ass mosquito like that flying around, it's just the male. The only reason they keep them around is for breeding purposes. Lysenko used colonizer science. Don't believe in, believe in that shit. Exactly. <laughs> Only facts change his name to random facts TV. Um, yeah. Sounds like y'all need to see some fucking leather jacket bugs. If you think that's big. I remember. Kai's going to do a boomer. So, you know, um, I remember back in the day when you could drive down the, the highway and your car would be utterly coated in dead insects. Now, I haven't had that happen in ages and ages. Just because the insect pop is so low now? Yep. It's what uh, the bottom of the uh, bottom of the food chain collapse looks like. The insects are not as plentiful as they used to be. Puka, I'm old as fuck, and I remember that too, right? We used to drive down the highway, and you'd just be coated in dead insects. You'd have to stop off at, like, a gas station or a service station or a rest stop and clean your fucking windows and clean your headlights because there were so many goddamn insects at night. Now, just barely anything, really. Obviously, you don't live in Louisiana. Yeah, you know, you, there, there are fucking pockets of it. I, yeah, I, I can... I, skeptic, I got I got the joke the first time you did it. Um, unfortunately, I've had this shirt. Um, unfortunately for your joke, I've had this shirt for, well, maybe longer than you've been alive. Um, Karina, how old are you? I'm 23. I have had this shirt longer than you've been alive. So that shirt, that it's, beautiful it's, Hawaiian shirt. It's coming up on 25 years old. And my roommate. Oh, yeah, for sure, Skeptic. It's older than you then. Yeah. yeah. Yep. It's It's been around for a bit. It's seen a few beaches. Um. RV uh, long convo with the buddy. Well, I hope it was a productive conversation. Um, I have towels about that old, says Buka. Um, No, it does not come from Hawaii. Uh, no. oh. it does not Mute come me, Hawaii. Lucy. And hey there, hey, Lucy. I'm trying to manage my mouse to shut off the tw Twitch. There we go. Um. Oof. Facts. I'm 33, so would have would have worn it to a kindergarten graduation. <laughs> there you go. Facts. 
Uh, we have so many bugs that we have specific seasons for the mosquito termite uh, love bug. Solid. Well, when we have to import them, Cassidy, we know where to get them from. Um, oh my God! I lived in an apartment building that had uh, love bug that had uh, ladybugs infested in the wall. Oh, uh, I, I had love of ladybugs. I had a it cricket in I had a cricket <laughs> infestation in a, uh, in a house in Arizona, in the walls and everything. It drove me absolutely insane one summer. Yeah, it was too much. I used to love ladybugs, and after that, I did not love ladybugs so much. Um, and, and Duffy, I love that. <clears throat> the shirt, that shirt is the Boogaloo leader. When Kai isn't wearing it, it's scheming and planning in the closet. Um, uh, <laughs> no, in Arizona crickets. Um, yeah, it, it was, it was bad actually. Um, my, uh, my parents had a look, uh, my parents and I have to actually spent all, despite Despite everything, we actually haven't spent much time together uh, over my life. Um, they had a tendency to go places during like summer break and stuff, and I'd just be left home, um, which is the way I preferred it. Don't look at this as like some sort of like they're gallivanting around and leaving their ch trust me. Spending a spending the summer like your sophomore year of high school alone with your house at your disposal, like trust me, it was a great way to live. Um, but yeah, one summer they like they left and I was home all fucking summer and the walls had a cricket infestation and holy shit. To this day, I hate crickets. <laughs> Latchkey Kai. Eh, somewhat. Uh, it reminds me I need to clean yeah, my closet. My mom used to leave us alone for a long time and it was like, peace, finally. Yes, go get a, go away with some other <clears throat> guy, bitch. Leave us the hell alone. Um, one time my great uncle drank a cup of coffee, then he just spit out a chunk of live ants in his mouth. Eh, fair enough. Cup was infested with dark ants that looked like coffee. Nice. Um, got bit by a ladybug once. So I was more confused than hurt. Uh, <laughs> um, they usually just piss on you with their uh, excrement system. Uh. Caboose. I don't know what the difference is either, but I can attest to that. Yeah, the the crickets in Arizona are more obnoxious for some reason. Uh, they're just louder. I don't know if it's a different subset of the species or what the fuck is going on there, but yeah, for sure. Um, Zippy, my cat who died in December. I'm sorry. Uh, hunt, he hunted and killed crickets. Loved him for that. Nice. Um... I had a cricket under my bed once that lived there for about a month and I could not find the damn thing. Oh my god, that was loud. Um, who is posting? Oh, I got more. Um, all right, cool. Oh, let's see. Oh, it is. Wait, it happened with me and a frog. <laughs> um, well, I'm glad you got some Berkey in theory, uh, consumed skeptic. Um, and yes, I mean, of course he was smarter than all of the chuds, but the fact that remains is he is sort of foundational to a lot of their shit. Um, <laughs> Arizona crickets evolved to yell over cars. Um, all right, let's see here. Where's my thingy? There's my thingy. That is true, Cassidy. The Chinese or Japanese lady beetle are... Oh, for that would do it. There is like one or there's all of two or three species of cricket all in California. Um, California has mostly grasshopper, a much quieter sounding insect on average. Uh, compared to Arizona, which has the fucking tropical house cricket, which if you've seen a picture of them, dies for days, click that's just as loud. I like bugs. I, I really don't I don't really care one way or the other about bugs like I I don't kill them I just set them outside I catch them and fucking I knew that with spiders and I've had roommates that totally flip out because I don't kill spiders I just get them on a piece of paper dude put them outside done S spiders are your bro fucking r slash spider grandmothers 
Grandmother spider, you don't you don't kill them. They have a function. Uh, let's see here. So I'll open a link here. Second, give me a second. Do. Oh Jesus Christ! Fucking yeah, they kill things that bite you. Casual cupcake. <laughs> yeah, I actually I'm usually yeah, rather right. particular with spiders. If they're in my home, I'm I'm usually a bit more aggressive with them. But if they're anywhere else, the only time I'll kill them is if I actually can recognize them as something that could hurt humans. Well, and I have been bitten by a brown recluse. Uh, by a brown recluse. Oh recluse. geez. Okay, wow. how is did you call an ambulance or go to the hospital or something? No, I went to the hospital. Um, I didn't realize what it was until like a day later. And my dad's like, what's wrong with your leg? And I'm like, I got bit by a spider. And I had like yeah, a, the... a like round, mushy spot on my leg. Yeah. Uh, okay, so, so was, it like, a, was it like necrosis setting in like that dark spot rounding it? Yeah. Oh shit! It okay, like, yeah. It was like a blister with surrounded by a black spot, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, so they took care of it. But I still like this is forty years later. I still have the scar in my leg. Oh, of course you will, because it literally just killed the damn. It just killed the tissue there. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's they they cause uh, necrosis of tissue. That's that's their gig. Um, but it didn't make me scared of spiders. It just you know I'm just careful around looking and seeing what kind it is and getting them out of my house see the issue is is that brown recluses are pretty easy to spot where i'm from black widows are way sneakier and yeah. there's a mimic species called there's the giant uh house spider and then there's the uh the hobo spider yeah, which hobo is spiders, pedip yeah. front pedipelts are Filled to the brim with a toxin very similar to the brown recluses, but you can barely tell the difference between it and the giant house spider. The only difference is its pedipalps look swollen. Yeah, when I was at survival camp in my teens, I got sent there for punishment, and then I wanted to go back the next year. Really pissed off my mom. But uh, the outhouses were just crawling with black widows at night, and so you just went in the bush and covered it up if you had to go to the bathroom because you, you'd get bit in the butt and yeah, there was this one girl and she was too dainty and she uh she was the kind of girl we're out there in the effing desert and like nobody's wearing deodorant nobody's wearing makeup she got up we got up at like four o'clock in the morning to go and work and slave um so that we could get off before the sun got too hot and she would get up an hour early to go curl her hair with a butane butane uh, curling iron and put on her makeup and everything. And everybody was like mocking her because she had to still do all that. And she refused to go out in the bush and insisted on going in the outhouse. And one night in the middle of the night, she got bit on the ass with a black widow and she had to be hauled 60 miles to the nearest hospital, ass up in the back of a pickup truck with, and her butt swelled so she couldn't put her pants back on. And I thought it couldn't have happened. To I'm sorry. Nice I'm sorry, Lucy. I'm sorry. I gotta, this is just fucking hilarious. Glazy, welcome, despite everything. Uh, preferably raid a conservative republic, true blue collar, hard working patriot. Um, fucking hilarious. Um, one, Republicans don't even meet conservative political science requirements anymore. They they don't get qualified as conservatives anymore. They're not. They're not. They're not fiscally conservative. Uh, so, I mean, you know, what, what are the qualifications anymore? They just hate women and, and queers. So, yay. I mean, that's, doesn't make any sense even. And um, immigrants. Oh yeah. Yeah. They want to add people. more laws. They want to take away rights. Like they're the only ones advocating for this shit now. Um, so there's that. And then there's the, uh, true blue collar, hardworking patriots. Um, one, Generally attempting to overthrow your own government isn't seen as patriotic in most cases, but hey, that you you do you, boo. You do you. Um, and as far as blue collar goes, 
you know, like what? The millionaire Republicans that are uh, that are all uh, spread throughout this country, right? Like politicians who are just millionaires and billionaires, like true blue collar work, hardworking Republicans. Like, oh, I don't know, Mitch McConnell. He seems he seems like a hardworking American patriot. I'd like <laughs> to ask the, the entire conglomerate of the Senate to uh, listen to me. Do my turtle dance in front of all of you for the next three hours. And we're and, not going to uh, do I that stop. shit for the next four years. I'm going to stop any bill from passing. Cool. Unless it's Clinton. He can enter from the behind. Um, thank you, Amaris. Thank you, Amaris. I hear so many sound bites of him in particular. I don't know why. Lord. I'd pay that man to actually say Hurdle. <laughs> Mitch McConnell would really like the Muppet Show would really like to get McConnell back up on the balcony. Um Yeah, man, you gotta think, shaving that much felt off every day must be a pain in the ass. I just I find it amusing that you what kind of conservative are you? Mm, glazy. What kind of conservative are you? Are you fiscal conservative? Are you social conservative? Do you understand the Burkean roots of your ideology? Do you understand that fundamentally most of you are just monarchists in sheep's clothing? Wait, if no one likes Mitch, don't tell me. Your favorite guy is in Texas, and he happens to have the last name of Cruz, and his first name is not Theodore. Still waiting on that formal apology from Canada. Um, Ted Ted Cruz is great, Glazy says. Ted Cruz is great. Oh, I called it. Good call. Good call. Um, yeah. What makes Ted Cruz great? Is it the fact that he's not a hardworking blue-collar American? Yeah, I, I, I would love to know what makes Ted Cruz great. Yes, exactly, Puka. The oh, you mean the Zodiac Killer? Um, <laughs> Ted Cruz is great because it's not a real human. Um, still, um, hey, Adia, hey there, Adia. Thank you kindly for the six months. Look at Adia putting up some fucking numbers. Um, I love this website. Ted Cruz for human president. 100% human candidate. I have been incubated from birth to be your overlord. Fucking. Oh, I wish to shut down the space yeah. program and destroy all telescopes abruptly and without explanation. Uh, Ted, Ted Cruz beach tips. Beach has many perils due to its proximity to sodium rich water and packs of unattended children. This. <laughs> Fucking the skin is the enemy of the sun. It is vital to protect your outermost layer from the sun's violent rays. Consider wearing khaki and golf shirt for the duration of your visit to the beach. A uh, fucking beware of loose children. Opportunistic children capitalize on beaches, looser restrictions, surrounding behavior. They can and will attempt to take your egg. Thoroughly laws by very, uh, th uh, the laws vary by location is universally acceptable to reprimand them with a single firm tap to the head, neck, or chest. Update. I must return to my hometown of Texas to slumber for an amount of time you would consider reasonable. Thank you. Your support and skull sizes have been documented. <laughs> I absolutely, I absolutely adore. The dude who's been running that website has been running it for years. I absolutely adore that website. It is one of the funniest fucking things. Oh, God. I'm more of a Ben Carson guy myself, though. The a bad child like it's extra tasty <laughs> they you mean ben carson the the walking example of how someone can be a, uh, a world-class expert in something and be utterly ignorant in every other regard that ben carson yeah yeah he's a great one um yeah oh yeah sweet 
fucking dude he said tons of stupid ass shit over the years such as ben carson thought the pyramids were for a grain storage oh there's the iq oh what is it about you guys um, I'm just going to quote uh, uh, Stephen Hawking on this regard, who, by the way, was way smarter than Ben Carson. And anybody who brags about their IQ is a loser. One of the smartest men who existed while we all were alive collectively right now was would rag on people who talked about their IQ. It's pathetic. And the fact that you immediately went to the flawed way of measuring intelligence, something about those right wingers and the like sort of like libertarian right, they really do have a hard on for the IQ thing. Well, you're probably not, you're probably not a fucking socialist. Given that, uh, well, hang on, let's just, let's just pop this out here. Given that you have a literal American flag in your, uh, in your uh, account header and your first fucking uh, comments were anarchists get real, man. And then telling me to raid a conservative Republican, true blue collar, hardworking patriot. Well, let's just say that your uh, predilections and biases and leanings are, well, kind of right there on the surface for all to see. Uh, Why, hello? Why, hello? Taken in co uh, taken in combination and coordination with all of those other factors, yeah. Come with me, um, and you'll see a world of pure contradiction. Republicans lost in morals and cancellations. Ah. Uh, <laughs> you may try solid example. Um, is that a video game? Um, Jesus fucking Christ. Either way, um, normally I would entertain um, further conversation with whatever the fuck. Laura S Lauren Southern brought up IQ and talked about our trans comrades. It was predictable and sad. Dude, I'm telling you, they always go to... It always ends up at the Jewish question, by the way. Like, inevitably. You show me somebody talking about IQ, I'll show you somebody who you can lead all the way to the Jewish question with, like, three prompts, usually. You can usually push them that direction, and they just they just sprint the rest of the way to fucking, but the Jews! Um, Find your racism for easy steps. Ask them about how they feel about their place in society. See if they feel like their culture is currently under pressure. Oh, uh, See if they feel like RZ, uh, we already had a had a suggestion. Thank you. Um, but yeah, we uh, I've already got one um, that I'm gonna I'm gonna dump to. So um, yeah. Oh, what do we, what do we do? Oh yeah, fucking, oh, well, maybe we'll do the nine minutes and do the funny number. If we go for of nine more minutes, we get the, we get one of the funny numbers, 420. Um, <laughs> oh, whether, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it is fairly well suited. Um, you know, the, eh, whatever, I don't care. Um, saw an episode of Atheist Experience a couple of weeks ago when someone was talking about skulls getting smaller and the host didn't realize he was referring to the bell curve and the great replacement. Oh, Jesus Christ. Um. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Sweet. That's, that's a solid channel lore insult. You aren't worth the 30,000 points. <laughs> uh... 
That's a deep cut sweep. And behind Animal Lies. Uh, if you time it just right, you can get 420.69. Um, <laughs> yeah, devil boy. Ah, yes, the one Jewish boy I grew up with is oppressing my culture. Um, when everything, when I'm fully vaccinated and everything starts to reopen, I'm going down to the Reform Synagogue uh, down the street from me. I've driven past it for years and years and years. I I want to I want to round out some of my uh, theolo uh, theological knowledge. Like I'm I'm decent with the Bible. Um, but I want to, uh, you know, I've never, I've never even bothered studying the Torah to that extent. I'm, uh, you know, they have an educator there who specializes in it and I'm going to go down and have a conversation see if they don't mind outsiders wandering through just out of curiosity sort of situation, which I understand they have to be on their guard due to all of the assholes. But, you know, um, uh, Hey, yes, Glaze, should at least be interesting. Most trolls are boring. That's why they're trolling. I know. They need to be interesting. I don't mind an interesting troll. They're fun to play with. Be creative. Be be humorous and be creative. Is this is this is the core of anything. Be humorous, and be creative. Um also slow roll it. You came out with that fucking, like, blue-collar conservative patriot bullshit way too early. You gotta slow roll it, man. Just take your minister card with you, problem solved. Yeah, that's probably a way to go, actually, Cassie. That's probably a solid recommendation. Thanks for putting that in there. Um, yeah. I'm fairly well Good hydrated. Point, Good point. Trolling can be an art. I have a friend who's like kind of a professional troll, and he is very good at it. He is always amusing, and he's like very crafty at it. <laughs> he used to go troll gore sites together. What, like Adam Carolla? Dude, Adam Carolla is just he's such a bummer. I, I listened to, like, the audio book of his, like, a few years back. I forget which book it was. I, I listened to it, though. And it was just like, man, you understand. Com it seems to be that when you go right wing, it's difficult to be funny anymore. Right? Like, that's left wing has humor. Right wing just seems to. Hey, let's make fun of fucking, you know. I mean, he, one of the jokes, he, one of the jokes, one of the jokes he talks about um, is about taking away HIV medications, taking away the triple cocktail from HIV patients that complain about capitalism. Like this is this is his idea of humor. Oh my God! Like this, is this so is sad. this is his. This is the setup, the framework for the joke. All right, is taking away triple cocktails hey, from H human being. HIV Aren't patients. Funny? Yeah, it's 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 just it's like mm, something about that. Um, yeah. Yeah, exactly, Cassie. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, fucking, um, Kinnison was, man, I don't know. I'd have, probably have to go back. Um, I didn't find Kinnison funny. Someone told me conservatives make bad comedians because, uh, subvert, invert expectations and a white male punching down on oppressed minorities is not an inversion, but actually the expectation. Um, no, I'm not the one who said that casual, but based on what my recommendations and analyses of stand-up comics, you know, that's rule one. Uh, standard rule of comedy is your job number one is subverting expectations. As I told Wither a couple of days ago, a few days ago, um, subvert at, your job is to subvert expectations. So you're walking them down a, uh, down a path and your job is to shove them into the undergrowth when they're not paying attention. That's essentially the job of a comic. Um, and also get them to enjoy it. Uh, so, yeah, job one. Um, but, yeah, that wasn't me who said that outright. 
Uh, you just look at Rogan's comedy, for example. Dude, Rogan used to be funny. He's not now, but he used to be funny. Yeah. Uh, it's anarchism, Rev. It's anarchism. Um. <laughs> oh, created four minutes ago. Oh. Am I tired? Do I regret platforming the sickos? Uh, this is just horrible, uh, horrible uh, fucking grammar. Uh, but I do believe they were attempting to call me. They were attempting to say hi, little uh, R slur towards me. You regret platforming the sickos out there yet or no? So let me answer. If you're still here, proudly, Juche, um, even though you got banned. Um, Yes, I, I'm. I'm completely. Uh, I, or no, no. I. Uh, I am completely happy with. Um, with platforming said. Um, degenerates or yeah, sickos. Oh, here comes one. He's banned on a lot of, a lot of rooms. Yeah, yeah. I, um. I'm. I'm quite. Uh, we. We talked about this last week. Um. I have never, oh, never, oh, oh, well, I've never, uh, liked the idea. We talked about this on Podbean back in the day. I never liked the idea of like giving community names and shit like that. Right. It's not that I'm against them for everybody else, but for myself as an anarchist, you know, that sort of thing. I don't like collectively, I don't like collectivizing people under some title, right? Like, you know, uh, oh, Voshites or uh, fucking Curio Obscurities, that sort of thing. Uh, cur uh, uh, obscurities. Um, but the one thing that I've always, that has always amused me and I could get behind if I had a name for people who are members of this community, fucking DGENs would be it. I, I think, I think I, I could get behind that. Fucking DGENs. Like, <laughs> fuck. Just embrace it, it. Yeah. Just lean into it and embrace it. Fucking MLs, uh, right wingers, MLs, all sorts of people accuse like various leftists and anarchists and homosexuals and trans people of being, you know, degenerates all the time. I like it. Quite frankly, everybody knows my position on edge runners. The most interesting, the only interesting people are usually the people who are living on the extremes. The ones who have a white picket fence with two and a half kids and a fucking dog and a cat and a, like a 401k, they're boring as fuck. Those people are boring beyond belief. You show me somebody who spent like 15 years as a heroin addict and I'll show you somebody who has some interesting stories. Right? Like that. that's in fact have a lot of interesting stories. He's also uh, married to a heroin addict. Yeah, so I, I, the fucking DGENs is something I've always been able to get behind. Like, edge runners are the most interesting people. They just are. It's the way it works. Like, there's no real way around that. So, we're going to cue this off. And hopefully, I can hit this mark. We're going to raid over to level head. Um, if I can do this correctly, we're going to raid out at exactly uh, 4... Uh, four uh, there we go. All right. Cool. <laughs> I didn't even say goodbye. We just raided out. <laughs> like, I was I was literally 